So now he's ready. So he needs somebody to pop out. Somebody fuck off. I got to guess. I'll, I'll be out there on YouTube. I appreciate so, it. Uh, just, uh, just a PSA. Be nice to Wrong Thinker. This, uh, he's, he's a very esteemed guest on uh, Uncheckled. If you're a dick, uh, you'll get two warnings. Right. You'll get one there time out, then I'll fucking ban you. That is the order of things. Hello, yes. Uncheckled. Welcome, Wrong Thinker. Hello. Good evening, sir. Hello, Wrong Thinker. Hello, wrong thinker. Mm -hmm. Welcome. Thank you. Thank you. How's uh, how's everyone's evening going so far? Wonderful. Now that you're here. Yeah. Hey, oh, wrong finger. First time I spoke to you there. Thanks for coming on. Yeah. yeah thank you. Yeah. Nice to meet you. Yeah. Pleasure. I was. Uh, I was. Uh, I actually had the stream on in the background, and I but I was finishing up the wrong thinker thinks post, which just went up a moment ago. Uh, we'll as I think. In the middle uh, of the reading. But um, I figure I'm. I, I speak more lively than uh, I write, so. <laughs> no, this was awesome. And then the, I didn't know if you heard them ask me, would you think he would come on? I was like, because well, I know how you are normally with maintenances. You want to make sure, I uh, hey, I said it. We want to make sure that maintenance doesn't, like, you know, fall flat on its face. And in case it does, you kind of need to be there if it falls flat on its face. So I appreciate right, right. it. I just got home, so. And they asked me, hey, can you jump in because the game's still down? And, of course, nobody knew it was going to be 90 minutes. And, yes, I did just tell them that. And I said it again. And you said he he forgave me for violating my NDA and telling you that it was going to be a longer maintenance. So <laughs> I'm going to give the floor to him and let him just roll with it. Go sure. For it. I mean, I, I don't know. Um, is there any particular thing you guys want me to clarify or talk about? Because there's, there's a ton in this yeah, release. Like, yeah. What's that? With the <laughs> it's a great update, by the way, a fantastic update on the onset. Sure. onset. There's a few questions that, you know, on the panel uh, we've been debating on and maybe guessing and summarizing on there, and this is maybe where the clarification should come in. The right, diamond I, tech. Okay. If you are... Uh, yeah, actually, uh, sorry, a uh, real quick question. Um, on the stream, is it acceptable if I sip an adult beverage? Is, uh, yes, how it is perfectly fine. Yes. That's perfectly okay. fine. Right. Drink as much yes. as you want. I'm already drunk, so it doesn't matter. As long as it's not branded, we're okay. Oh, wait a minute. <laughs> you have to share. Do I need to send you another bottle? <laughs> <laughs> no, this one is just a, uh, we have, we had, uh, you know what? I'm not going to product place. I'm not going to do I'll it. Sponsor. Oh, come on. There's your chance now. <laughs> it is a beer. Surprise. It, it looked like a Corona. What color yeah, is the Maybe it was a Corona, maybe it looked Corona, which is a very <laughs> similar product. There we go. Similar. <laughs> Well done, well done. A beer is a beer, and it's, it's, it's a beer. all good. It's all good. Go for it. All right. Cool. So, uh, yeah, sorry, sorry to interrupt there. Just wanted to make sure that was acceptable. Okay, well, so, um, the, main, the main debate we're having right now is with the new raid coming out with the Diamond Tech, hmm. in the post it said that one Diamond Tech was good for Liberators, Vindicators, Purifiers, Hammers, Furies. Is this, so is that one unlock is good for all those, or do you need to unlock one for each of those units? Uh, good question. You do have to unlock one per unit. The, we actually corrected that forum post shortly after we put it up. So if you go back, you'll probably see it's worded a little bit differently now to be a little clearer on that. Um, but the idea is you unlock one thing per unit, and then that unit you know, basically has it forever from, from henceforth, right? So like if I get the Liberator tech, I can then equip it to all my liberators, and all my liberators have it forever. Yes. So Excellent. You would have to do basically six uh, bases to get all that tech. Yeah, and, and sort of like the way that that we imagine the, the process working is because I understand that raids had actually gotten very short for completion time. Um, and I don't know if you guys remember back when we released the feature, but to complete a raid was actually, it took a much longer amount of time, and there are there a lot of bases in it, right? So mm -hmm. um, with this release, you know, I, I think it's I think it's self evident that difficulty is going to increase, but we're actually trying not to be crazy about this. We actually want the raid to be more accessible to players now than the original raids were when they initially launched. Um, and of course, we have we have new stuff in there. We have different things in there, uh, so it's definitely like harder than it is before the release. But it's it's easier than it was when we originally shipped raids. And again, the whole experience is designed to be this compartmentalized. You know, I, I go in and I, within an hour, I walk out with 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 the prizes um, with a couple of friends because we really wanted to promote a cooperative experience. And that was something that 
raids kind of uh, faltered at. Uh, I think originally, and, and, and even, you know, especially later on, like, the way in which people engage with it is they'd sick with, like, with, like, they'd sick one poor person in the alliance on the farm grind. It's like, we're just going to grind this and just run through the paces. And yeah, it doesn't take super long because the bases are easy. But that's, that's just a, a, a really, really piss poor experience. Um, it's just like, you know, it's just not fun. <laughs> anyway, sort of a, a sort of a rambling explanation, but we, we really just wanted to be this, this focused, compartmentalized, like going with two friends, be like, hey, let's, let's do it. Let's do a raid, guys. And then everybody hops in and do a raid and you get some prizes and, and then you're done. And then it's just this fun little activity that you can do as long as you've got the intel to engage in it. Uh, as for the raids, um, the, the war efforts themselves, you, you, obviously you mentioned that they, they, they've been re reworked in the post and they've been reworked in the, the totally. big post about the um, the Alliance raid feature itself. Six yep. hours? It's a bit shit. Yeah, yeah it is a bit shit. Um, so the, let, me, let me talk about why we did that, because that's actually, uh, I'm glad you brought that up. And I heard you guys talking about this a little bit on the stream earlier, but again, I was trying to focus on the post, so I was sort of trying to finish the damn post. Um, so what war efforts are supposed to be is a boost that you get when you need a boost. And so the idea is you hit some raids, build up your... Um, uh, your supplies, and then when you when you the alliance picks an optimal time to cash in for the boosts you want, you do it, and and that that means like okay, let's as an alliance invade another sector, and just go go nuts for like three or four hours. Um, so you just go at it, and you go in, you deal your damage, and get out. What we don't want raids to be is we don't want raids to be something that you feel obligated to farm all the time to keep this tiny little bonus up 24 seven. Because keep in mind, if you have a bonus that's on all the time, uh, that the way in which that affects the dynamic of the game is that we actually need to, the, more, the, the, the wider that gets, we actually start to need to account for that in our designs. We're like, well, people, people have this, and, and I talked about this a little bit on the stream about sort of like the, the whole structure of the business model is such that if something is is omnipresent, if power is omnipresent uh, in the game, and if everybody always has like this little 10% bonus going on, and, and lots and lots of players have this bonus. So I, I kind of, I'm kind of like, man, people, people are going to be pissed about six hours. I know, I knew this was going to happen, and I'm not surprised, and I don't blame anyone. But what that does is it means we just internally, in order to make the business work, is we have to hit a certain difficulty margin. So we just kind of soak that. But if we shorten the duration to six hours and increase the magnitude, I mean, the, the unit one went from 10% to 25%. The defensive structure one went from 20 to 25%. Uh, and I think uh, the economy one even went up to 50% from like 40% or something like that. So the bonuses went up so you can feel them a little bit more. It's a more tangible bonus, but you're, you're actually not gonna be able to have it up all the time. But what that also means is we no longer really need to account for it in our difficulty. We don't have to account for everybody just sitting 10% higher all the time. So the, the difficulty fundamentally can be like 5 to 10% lower to account for that not 10% for most players. So that when you use the 25% bonus, you're actually going to be like, we won't have accounted for that throughout all our bases. You're actually going to feel that bonus a lot more. And that's a trade-off, and I recognize that. But I, I, would, I would change the framing of it to like, it is, it's a bonus that you get when when you want to cash in you, you cash in your chips you get this bonus the whole alliance benefits for a period i mean let's let's be honest 25 percent for for six hours let's say you've got six thousand uh supplies stored up um right that means your entire alliance which could be 200 people are going to be getting 25 percent offensive bonus and 25 percent defensive bonus because you can keep two active potentially for the first you know like a big 12 hour during the day block during the event that's really meaningful when you multiply that by 50 to 100 people in, in the larger alliances. Um, and that's way more meaningful than it used to be. Uh, but it's also for that shorter duration. So it encourages the cooperation. It says, you guys, as an alliance, coordinate and pick your times and do it. And it doesn't actually even benefit larger alliances radically more than smaller because of the way we've, we've restructured it. So um, because Intel bases are only up for 
uh, three days of the week. And we, we might change what three days those are. We might shift them around or something. But the, the whole value in that, it, what that means is if, an, if a gigantic alliance has, say, 200 members and they farm themselves up to absolute max uh, supplies, which is going to be uh, 10K as of the release, that's 10 war efforts worth. Well, when those three days are gone and they've, they've ground out like they're using their war efforts, like they, they can't keep them up for the whole time any more than anyone else because they have to wait until the, the intel bases come back. So it all becomes about when you use them and it becomes much less about constantly farming these things and just constantly having them up. It's like, all right, guys, let's capitalize on the boost. Let's go and let's wreak some havoc. Let's fuck up kick size bases. Let's go after another sector. Hell with it, but but it's not built into just the difficulty of the game anymore. So that was the whole reasoning behind that that whole transition. And I totally get the negative reaction. Um, and 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 maybe in a month you'll still be like, yeah, that's still shit. But, but can I, can I question it. you there on that? There, yeah, please. Is this something that the players have been asking for? Good question. Um, yes and no. So there have been some players who have asked for updates to raid content in general. Um, obviously, that's not explicitly asking for six-hour war efforts. Um, but when we see when we see people saying things like "I'm sick and tired of the grind," for example, um, one of the things that we have to find ways to do is to is reduce that grind. And there's there's options. So let's specifically keep it focused on, on war efforts and raids, um, just as, as this example. So one thing we could do is we could actually make it even easier to get these war efforts. That's one option that we could have done. We could have said, um, you know, you, you do one raid and you fill up your intel to max, and then you just get this bonus all the time. Um, maybe, maybe we do something like we, I mean, basically you can move closer and closer to the point where we just say, War efforts are on for everybody all the time, and we can step in that direction. But we were already mostly there. So this, this has taken the reverse approach and said, um, we want to reduce the grind by saying, you can only store so much of these. They don't last for super long, so instead you have to make a choice about when you use them strategically. But because you're making that choice and you're actually not trying to keep them on all the time because it's literally impossible, you making that choice is another way that you're actually grinding less. You have to engage in this system uh, a little bit less to keep that going. So there were two directions we could have gone, and that was the one we went. I, I understand that, that, that your, all your points are very valid, and I'm not going to argue on one of your points on that there, but just uh, I think the way it comes out, the mathematics come out, I, I think it's slightly unfair on the players. Just that's No, just... I, 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 have, I, I actually, I actually have to disagree. <laughs> And it's it, it's going to sound like I, I'm I'm going to go kiss the kickside proverbial ass as it were and agree, because no, balance but... balance wise balance wise it makes sense. By this time, it actually lowers the difficulty curve for players in general, while giving us the opportunity. And it's it's going back to the thing that I like the most, which is strategic planning. I mean, everything in my base right now, I've strategically planned out for about six months. It's It sounds ridiculous, but I like to plan ahead on what I'm going to do, what could possibly come out, and how much it's going to cost. Yeah, if and, and when and that's, that's necessary. Strategic planning is absolutely important. I'm a little worried about that because you said they're not going to increase with the release. They're not going to increase the um, amount of days at the Intel bases. So are we staying sick? Uh, <laughs> shit. Are we sticking to, I'm not even drinking, I need a fucking drink. Are we sticking to the same schedule since you're not going to increase that? I'm just a little concerned about that and here, and I'm just going to express it out there and here's why. Okay, so let's take Labor Day for instance or if we had any kind of event where there was any kind of holiday or something like that. If we're planning that strategically, and of course that would normally be coordinated by, let's just say, our alliance leader and maybe a couple officers or what have you. I'm speaking for my alliance, but I, and, and I realize, and so I'll be selfish. This is player. This is mod head off. So you plan ahead of time for an event. Um, most of the people on the panel know that we have been, and, and that's kind of lessened, but we had an old-fashioned, we were bored, let's have an award thing in our own sector so we invited other alliances to come to 49 
just for a shit kicking fest. But we still had to plan ahead to make sure we had the bonuses running. And then as alliances would jump out, and then somebody would say, hey, look, this clan's coming in next. Then we would, you know, run a raid again, and we'd get those boosts going, and we'd have the boost going. So I'm just a little bit concerned if it's the lesser amount of time, and you're not going to increase the intel bases. And again, you know me, I'm playing devil's advocate, darling. This is a worldwide game, and everybody in the world it, uh, across just about every nation, country, and time zone is in my alliance. So that's one of the reasons why it works so great so we can get like the you know the bonuses up for the events that's why we can get that sector bar to move at certain times and we know when those times are good when we're going to have more people on just a little word that if you're going to lessen the amount of time that it runs even though we have more things in our base defensive or offensively that we're not going to have the opportunities that we need to get what we need from the bases does that make sense I think it does, and I want to. I want to say your your point regarding the the international fan base of the game is is well taken. Um, and I uh, one of the so I I'll give a sneak preview to something I talk about in the Wrong Thinker Thinks post a little bit, which is in addition to talking about raids, I talk about balance in general. Um, and what it is my hope, and this this is actually this is this is one of the things that this is like that keeps me up at night kind of thing at the moment regarding the game, you know, the, the thing that I'm sort of most nervous about is I really think this game, uh, and I, I've alluded to this in a couple of forum posts, including on uh, Phil's recent post, pardon me, is I want to take the game back to a place where um, strategy is a big part of that and coordination is a big part of that. And, um, and, and game balance is a part of that. And so when we talk about game balance, game balance is an ongoing thing. And as a team, we have been afraid of balance. Um, and let's use units as an example. Um, I think units are great, and this is what I talk about in the post a little bit again, but if we nerf something, uh, people, people riot. And I, I get that because we're nerfing things that they've worked very hard for. But if we buff things, a lot of the time, players will interpret that buff as a nerf to something else. Uh, and I, I want to get to a point where the community is a little bit more comfortable with us changing things, because I actually want to change things more frequently. And before people become terrified by this, the whole, the whole idea is that even if we successfully go to preview more, and there's a lot of reasons why we've had difficulty getting to preview, some of that's been technical, some of it's been timetables, what have you, that's still insufficient to really get a final judgment on, for example, a unit's power level. When the units get out to the community, um, you guys are inventive and imaginative, and sometimes we'll find things that we hadn't discovered. And sometimes that's awesome and healthy, but sometimes it's actually not. Sometimes units become exploitable. And so I guess what I'm getting at in a roundabout way is, and we can talk about general balance a little bit more, but to answer your question more directly, Skip, the, the times that these war efforts has, have been set to and their magnitude, yes, I want everybody to see that as a work in progress. I want people to see this game as a work in progress, and that includes us on our side, where we're willing to be flexible and work with you guys. And I think something, especially with unit balance, is we're going to be you know doing more regular balance updates. So things are fluid. So if we get something wrong, we're going to look to get it right, because that means you know that we can provide a consistent value. So when you bring up a point like the international thing, especially when an alliance has multiple international members, that is a reasonably strong argument that maybe maybe we extend the time somewhat and maybe as a counterpoint to balance, reduce the magnitude slightly. So like 12 hours and 20 percent, for gotcha. example, mm -hmm. um, or something like that. So because, again, we... we we do have economies that we have to sort of keep in balance when it comes to those things, but but we have many knobs to pull to make this happen. Or maybe we do one that costs more intel that lasts longer, gotcha. um, something like that. Okay. So, yeah, yeah. It, it, it's a work in progress, and I want people to feel comfortable with with things shifting so that we can get balance right. Maybe, so maybe I should measure twice and cut once. <laughs> 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 No, that's a very that's a very legitimate point, but I want to call out the, the intricacy of, of game balance a little bit. I mean, when we look at 
almost almost any other. I'm not. I'm not going to name names. We look like any other live game that exists. Live games exist in a state of flux, and if you if you look at say, uh, you know, a popular collectible card game that I shall not specifically name. I don't know if anyone's here that has. Yes. Yeah. Nerd credit. Yes. Um, yes. Okay. Credit. I put nerd credit in quotes. Um, <clears throat> including myself, of course. Um, <laughs> but like, there are tournament structures and rule structures designed to constrain the number of permutations because as, as the amount of content goes up, the permutations go up exponentially. So just for example, what I mean by that is if I only have three units, the combinations I have at my disposal are fairly limited, right? There's you know six six different permutations of any two units or something along those lines. So we have a gajillion units in our game, scientifically speaking, a gajillion units. Um, and yes, it's true that power creep makes some of those units less viable and some of them more viable. But we want to maintain the right number of units that are in that current happy space, and that's enough units that the permutations are really, really high, uh, and it means we're going to get things wrong. Uh, and 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 that's that's part of design is iteration. And I, I've been I've been in the professional business of game design for over well almost a decade now. A decade and like a and like a month, I think, which is weird to think about. I've been in this industry. Damn, for, you're old man. I know, right? Uh -huh. Um and the uh like d designers who think they're gonna get it right out of the gate are are wrong. That's not how it goes. Um, because you, the community, are too good. And I, it's not like a, 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 a pandering statement. Like, you will figure out ways to use things and these permutations and the combinations or something that works one way in one situation. When you consider all the things we need to account for, we could have a team of 500 people, which we don't, and it still wouldn't be enough to ensure that balance was perfect because there's so many moving pieces when you consider the number of defensive items and offensive items and, and interactions that you can have. So uh, I definitely agree with uh, measure twice, cut once, for sure. But in, in the world of gazillions of moving pieces, there's no perfect blueprint to build to, um, unfortunately. So that's where we want to get things right, but we, we want to work with the community to make this an iterative process. Well, I'd like to commend you for your amount of increased communication, despite anything that you've heard from anyone else. And I'm sure I speak for at least three quarters of the panel here, that everybody has noticed the increased amount of communication, especially from your desk. The Q&As have been awesome. And obviously, this is something that you guys have got planned out. And I know you're excited for us and about it. And as long as you're open to, well, if we want to bitch or complain a little bit about it, or we like, well, we wish, because, I mean, you guys have already done it. But then if you're open to us saying, well, see, this is why we said this, because, and because like you said, you say, well, we're too good. Well, look at how many thousands of people to play the game. Just the fact that you're open-minded to the fact that, okay, you're going to bring something into the game and you're willing to either come on a show like this or talk to the moderators, or put out, you know, what wrong thinker thinks. The amount of communication I personally forget about the fact of a moderator from a player's point of view, that just means volumes to me. It's a great deal, totally. Speaks volumes to me. I mean, even the people, you know, that were enemies with in the game occasionally, like some of the people who came to forty nine. You know, they have said it's like, well, we get more out of kick sign now than we ever did. That is. That couldn't oh, be huge, a huge compliment. That is a true huge. statement. And just one more point there, guys. I've got four hours, six minutes damage on my war rig. And the game is up oh, live. The health, the, live. The health, because the health has changed. That's why. Yeah. That's the okay then. I'm sorry we still have that bug. <laughs> that's okay. I, I, I never used it in a way. <laughs> it, well, I, I, I actually put in a <laughs> ticket for the same <laughs> not so long ago. Not so long. Speaking yeah, I, of, okay, well, speaking of bugs, because I had somebody just send me a little ping really quick, and I don't know yeah. if you fixed this, and I apologize, mm -hmm. since I haven't been around that much, because I've been kind of busy with family um, during the day, but someone asked me to re-ask you about the PvP 
gold cost bug that the repair time was the same but they want to spend their gold but the gold time is you had mentioned that yes you knew that was an issue and it was something that needed to be fixed so they wanted to know he just sent me do you know if it was in the maintenance i'm not online i can so, answer the question it was not in this maintenance we are okay. tentatively and if i give you any dates it may come back to haunt me but so don't do that so i won't do that but i'll tell you what we are looking at doing is there is at the very end of the wrong thinker thinks post I, I i i like to usually do a little like stinger at the end like i'm teasing something yeah uh, and there is something which i've name dropped a couple of times in the forums and you've seen probably in the monthly calendar called warpath yes, yes. and warpath is going to be i'm not going to talk about it in depth simply say that it is intended to be a highly skill-based pvp event and if we did any kind of pvp event and did not have that issue fixed we would look like a bunch of assholes well don't do that so that <laughs> that that's, makes me look bad too because then i really hard for me to defend you if you are one <laughs> Don't do that. Don't do that. I will aspire to not be. Because I have this, this particular player who would not be on the show, and, and, and I'm okay with that because Doc is the one who runs the show. But he's still a player, and he's a fighter, but he still coins, and, you know, that, that keeps the lights on over there behind you. I see it's getting dark there, but that keeps the lights on in the office and, and all that other kind of good stuff. They want to coin. They're just not coining as much. And when it was – when it was – correct it was fine when it went back to the gold cost being the same but the time was less they're still coining less they will coin more if that gets fixed it goes into i mean speaking of gold really i just want to add on to that tacking point it's not just the pvp platoons it's other platoons as well yeah, i mean i picked course. it i picked it up last night and i was uh, some, somewhere in the area of about like 20 hours which normally would would 20 hours usually in in the old in the old days 20 hours on a building is 40 gold 20 hours on that platoon was 70 gold and it doesn't make any fucking sense to me whatsoever i can sort of answer that um uh, this isn't a perfect answer by any stretch but we've actually we have recently brought onto the team somebody who is going to specifically or at least have a part of their job responsibilities evaluating effectively the value of the player's gold in all the various aspects of the game. This is a role that we have actually not actively had for a little while. So we're going to be doing some evaluations there. Um, and I have no idea what this person is going to conclude. I will in, they will actually probably be introduced on the forum, so you'll be able to talk to them more directly about that. Oh, good. Um, Somebody new to roast. <laughs> Indeed so. I wouldn't want to deprive, uh, deprive you of that opportunity. So you'll get your chance to talk more directly about that, but I can say that we're, that's an evaluation that we haven't done really in depth uh, in quite a while on this project, and it is overdue. Will anything come from that that, that benefits from you, you guys? I, I don't know is the answer. Uh, but I can tell you that we're at least going to do it, and we've got a person that's going to be at least in part dedicated to that very specific evaluation. Um, also, uh, real quick, there was something that um, I saw in the, uh, the side chat, I believe, by Daba. Did you want to ask that, that question about PvP out loud? There was something you were commenting on. Something um, you thought was a potential I, problem. Um, yeah, so if you log into the game right now, there's people with 9, 10k infamy. Mm -hmm. And, but, well, I'll just, anybody over 3k infamy? pretty much lives in a bubble 24 7. you go to jump to them and hey, they no. you'll never see you never see them out of a bubble very seldomly all right so if you do a pvp thing i saw there was a pvp thing with the trophy which is awesome but uh people are gonna you know they're gonna hit each other they're gonna hit all the counts they're going to go get infamy self bubble get a one star and live in a bubble and then they're gonna stay at the top and then also, last time we had a PvP <laughs> event, they had the Diamond Legion, and now I, everybody I, I, and their I, grandmother I, says them. Hang on a minute, I want, I want Ronald to, to say that specific sentence one more time. I said they're going to try. 
And we'll leave it at that. I like the sound of this. I like that. I like that a lot. We're going to try. So I I will focus on... I'm one of the... Yeah, I just want to focus in on one thing. When I describe this Warpath event now, and again, you know, maybe we'll fuck it up. Could happen. But we have looked very, very hard at the things that we feel undermine PvP as a true skill-based activity. And we have some thoughts on that, which we'll talk about more soon. But I, I right now, that, will stand by my statement that Warpath will be a skill-based PvP event. Could that include defense as well? I would like to believe so, yes. Uh, one of our big goals, um, it's come up a couple of times and we've seen, you know, pardon me, here, uh, when uh, the, the support turrets, we hope will add a layer of strategy to defense as well. And there is an aspect of, oh man, I'm, I can't, we want defense to really matter in this. Um, so there are reasons right now why defense doesn't matter as much. But we believe that it will, a smart defense will probably matter more in Warpath than it has in regular PvP. Well, I I, mm. I would enjoy that because I take pride in my base. I hate going to bubble somebody and leaving no defenders in because I know there's no point. Yep, there will be a point. I, oh, man. I'll tell you what. I when, when, when we get ready to reveal the details, I mean... We might on, reveal them on, on the, the point show. first. I will be show invited to come on them. the show and talk about the details of, of Warpath because I am oh, very, very excited. Oh, we would love that. Oh, well, yeah. Hell yeah. yeah we'll make we a would love show. that. Yeah. Now, I, I'm not slagging off your, your forum post. So they're very good there, but if we hear it from the horse's mouth, that would be brilliant. Yeah, I, my fingers are really crossed. I mean, something something that I, I want to point out is a lot of people talk about, you know, a lot of, a lot of the community talks about um, the desire for for PvP, and right now, people tend to just sort of, you know, mess about for kicks here and there. Um, but really, there's so much exploitability, for lack of a better word. It's not, I, I think calling it cheating is not fair, um, because they're not necessarily circumventing the, the system, they're, but they're exploiting the system uh, in ways They're boosting. Uh, and... We looked at that, and we really hope we've, we're have we going to make this. Um, w- again, I don't think we're going to get it perfect, but I think it'll be a lot better and a lot more skill-based than any PvP we probably ever had in the game. Well, that really excites me. That's like the best news I've heard. I know all the other update, uh, some of the updates are absolutely massive, but that alone there, would uh, I would welcome that. Yeah, well, thank you, and I'll, I'll look forward to the feedback. And like I said, when we're when we're ready to reveal the details, I, I can't promise any exclusive or anything, but I'll be happy to come on the show and and do some chatting about that, and you know, answer questions and so forth. Because I think it's I think it's a really big deal. I think PvP is an important part of the game that has been lost because of the magnitude of exploitability in our systems, um, and and frankly, some of the the uh, the cheats that we've clamped down on a little bit as of late and i know there's there's more there's infinite number of cheats but we're we're working on them yeah good work on that as well it's a yin and a yang for yeah. that and we knew we knew that we've talked about that way before you came on the the last show was is there's got to be some give and take let's let you guys do what you need to do to deal with exploitability and again speaking from someone who has done that for a living I won't call them hackers because they're not smart enough to hack. I won't even call them cheaters because even cheaters have to be smart enough to follow somebody who learned how to hack. The manipulators piss me off because they're just so freaking lazy. So I'm glad you've been able to close up some of that manipulation factor. And to those of you in the community here constantly bitching about it, if you listen to what he just said, you said, well, Kixai always brings this stuff out and they don't think about how someone's going to exploit something. Well, first of all, nobody creates anything in life anywhere. You don't go into any relationship. I see us playing a game with Kixie as a relationship. They make the game, we play it, we want to have fun, they have to keep the lights on. Nobody goes into any relationship and says, I wonder who's going to fuck with me now, okay? We don't have that anymore with Kixie. So he just said, if you were listening, the exploitability factor was something that we really had to focus on. So for all of those of you who have continually said, I'm not kissing his ass and, and, I, and I'm being serious about this. I'm not kissing Kick size ass. He just said, 
before we bring something into the game, we have to look at the exploitability factor. If you want, if you understand and been playing this game long enough, and you have been PMing me and bitching to me about cheaters and hackers and manipulators, there you go from the horse's mouth. They're thinking ahead. Well, wait, before we do this, let's think of the exploitability factor. So instead of rushing it out and throwing it out there and going, ah, fuck, we didn't think about that. They're thinking about it. Small steps, people. Small, small steps. Uh, I want to add to that that I think it's, it's even more important in the PvP space. Like when, when you know, there's an exploitative tactic against a, a kick side base, two things typically happen. Uh, the first thing is it gets exploited for a while, uh, and some people do get an un unreasonable advantage from that, and then we usually bump up the base in some way or account for that exploitability behavior because we, we literally have to, like, we have to do that. But with PvP, um, it's kind of a different equation because it's not an option that, that you guys have. If people find an exploitability tactic, you can't just bump up your base or do whatever. Like, that's not a choice that you have. And it shouldn't be a choice you have to make anyway. Uh, so for, from, like, PvP systems are a personal interest of mine. I, I really like them. I, I like PvP experiences. Um, and so the there's a very definite desire to make this something that's high quality. And if the Warpath event is successful, or is close and we see the ways to improve it for another round if we decide to do that to like okay we were 90 percent of the way there but it needs this one tweak to close out this one hole um then we'll do it and we like i said like iteration we want to get stuff right and we're, we're trying to do our research and our homework in advance trying to address these things in advance again it's, to me it's even more important for a high i, I sometimes drop the phrase high integrity but the PvP experience needs to be the highest integrity thing in the game. Because exactly. that's where you're just interacting with each other, and that's absolutely critical. And if any one group of people gets their hands on some kind of a manipulation, it right. ruins it for everyone else. And those of us who would normally want to engage in hardcore balls-to-the-wall PvPing, it's not that we don't want to do it, it's what's the point. If everybody right. has, you know... Uh, the, let's just take the legion manipulation if everybody can deploy 50 clones off their legion and or or let's go to the you know the um immortal units if everyone if if you find a particular group and everybody's exploiting that what's the point of even getting involved i don't i for, i mean i don't my morals will not allow me to do that i'm not going to go do it because it can be done even if somebody shows me how to do it it, right. Even if Pixide comes in and says, yes, we realize this, this is an issue and it's a bug and we're going to fix it, I'm still not going to use an exploit. I, that's my integrity. I'm going to play my game my way, but I will stop playing that part of the game because of all the manipulations. So I'm glad that you guys are are thinking like that because, like you said, that's the biggest part of the integrity. Because yeah, if you I, against another person... Yeah, and I want to comment on something you said there that's, that's really, really important, it, which I talked about a little bit before. There's sort of this, there's a myth that occasionally surfaces uh, on the forums in various locations where people say, you know, uh, you know, Kixi allows cheaters because it makes them money. Well, bullshit. There's Sorry. two ways you can take that, and I want to debunk both real quick. There's the obvious debunk, which is uh, obviously they're, they're not paying us for the experience, so that causes all of our numbers to be skewed, difficulty gets messed up, that affects all the players, terrible disaster, and we don't make shit from that. The second part of it that's, that's actually, I think, a little more insidious, the insidious part of the myth is they'll say things like, well, then honest players have to pay more to keep up. And that's the part I want to address that you just hit on, yeah. because people don't do that. If you're an honest player, usually you coin less because you check out of parts of the experiences. And it's really, yep. really bad for us when those cheats, again, especially in anything where players are in direct competition, undermine the experience. Because you don't cash up, you cash out. Yes, and that's mm -hmm. honest players actually leave the game so that they... I've done it twice. I've cashed out twice because totally. the experience was horrible. Yeah, I know. Completely. Well, I, I left an alliance. Or I left an alliance and went back to my own little tiny alliance. I keep that my own tiny tag for people 
who are coming back into the game. They don't have a tag. Uh, you and I have had this conversation. They haven't played in over a year. You know what it's like. You don't have a tag. You jump into a sector, and I keep that tag so that if they jump in with me or they go someplace else, they can take that tag with them so they can reunite with friends until they kind of get a feel for the game again. Yeah. And it, yeah. It, But, you know, it's I've dropped – tags because it's just why even participate because at this point what the hell pvp is so screwed up i'm talking about in the past where you know i don't want to drag all that up but it's just like there's no benefit and they're like well you're not going to get the boost i'm not going to be pvping to help everybody get the boost it's right. not going to matter to me so i'm not going to even i'm not going to participate in an alliance just to sit there to collect the boost does that make sense yeah I'm, not, yeah I'm not just i mean yeah if i'm on vacation or if i'm sick or i'm busy okay fine and everybody else is fighting if i'm going to be in an alliance i'm going to fight <laughs> why join an alliance if you're not going to fight you know i mean it's like i said i somebody said something about the thing about happened in 49. it's a war game people we all want to fight that's what we want to do friendlies yeah. not friendlies I, I would need to switch gears for one little thing, but I want to come back to that little thing about alliances. All right. So you and I had a little conversation, told me not to make any promises, but there's a bunch of people way up in the YouTube chat that said, because you know what I had asked you for about support turrets. And so you don't have to speak to it specifically about having a preview, hmm. but can you, are you testing the support turrets? And do you feel like, if you could get a preview that you would get some positive enough feedback from people. Yeah. So there's support charts are a very interesting thing. So there's multi parts to that, multi parts to that answer. The first is if we can get a chance to go to preview, I want to do it. Um, awesome. There are reasons why that may not happen, but I would like to go to preview. And that, by the way, they're not like nefarious reasons. It's like we've had intermittent technical issues with our preview environments. Um, and that has, been at least part of the cause that we don't we don't go to preview sometimes. Um, so I would like to see us get to preview this. I also think that purely from a technical perspective, portraits behave in an entirely different way than anything else in the game. So getting some stability checking from the community through preview prior to the release would also be valuable. Um, so for those reasons alone, I do think that preview would be valuable. And then there's the last part of the, the answer, which is, uh, Will community feedback affect the support turrets? And the answer there is yes, maybe, depending on what the feedback is. Um, but we'll definitely listen to what players to have to say um, about those turrets once they actually try them out. Um, but I also want to say one last thing on that, which is, again, we want to reach a point where players feel comfortable that if things are severely wrong, that we will fix them. So if we do not get the opportunity to go to preview, if the support turrets come out and they're stable enough, but like players are like, this one's stupid and really just breaks the whole game, we will be receptive to that feedback at that point, and we are willing to make adjustments to things after we release them for the long-term betterment of the game. Uh, and that's that's really important. I want to drive that home where we, you know, stability notwithstanding, we want to test for stability, but from a feedback perspective, we want to like. When we don't live in that world, when we don't live in the world where we're adjusting things on the fly, that actually means we're not being receptive. So when, we, when we're willing to adjust things on the fly, it means all the feedback that you guys put out there about things being too strong or too weak or doesn't make any sense or whatever, it means we can adapt to it on the fly. So that adaptability is really uh, what I want to drive home. Okay, so here's, here's what the – from my perspective as a moderator and then being on all the pages and then Daba just slipped it in the side chat. The pers the perspective is Daba don't slip it know. in the side chat. <laughs> <laughs> the yeah, perspective people on YouTube the giving questions is, I'm just putting it in the side chat here so this way we don't yeah, like this yeah. way you can you can pick them out and whatnot. Yeah the the perception is is that they're the community is still feeling now what I read Again, and I read it differently than some people do because I'm a moderator. You're my go-to guy, so I figure I can ask you questions. And you explain things to me. But the perception is is that they feel like, based on what they read about how support turrets are going to work, is that it makes drones completely useless. And there are people right now that are saying, I spent all that time to get this drone or that drone or equip my unit with this drone or that drone. They're, they have this perception that support turrets 
The people are going to overload so much with the support church that drones on any unit are going to be completely use useless. So I know what you explained to me. It helped me understand it. So now that you have the whole community, can you please help explain them, explain to them that drones are not going to be completely completely useless? Yeah, that's 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 correct. Um, the <laughs> the way that um, the dr what, I'll start by saying right now in the game. Very few things, if any, really deal with drone cover strategies. Um, and I, I think many of you are aware of this. Like, the Titan is still one of the most used units in the game for that very reason. The drone shield is really, really a strong, strong strategy. Um, and we don't want to delete that strategy from the game. But what we do want to do is provide everyone, the players and us, a way to sometimes circumstantially address that. And so, yes, if you go into a base and you see, you know, five hunter missiles, each of which are linked to a viral turret, yes, don't use drones there. But not everyone is going to use that setup. Not all of our bases are going to use that setup. So there will be, I, I think the way I would view this is I would say, there will now be a reason to not always use that strategy. Sometimes you will want to use a different strategy because the drone shield strategy will not be effective. But it's not the same as deleting or removing a strategy. For example, if I go into a base with my, say, Omega Sandstorm, or, or hell, let's keep using the Titan as an example. I go in with my Omega Titan. I'm attacking another player. And I'm like, crap, they've stocked up on, you know, hunters with viral and fusion turrets, so they're dealing a gazillion points of damage. Their turrets are all jack damage. My drone shield hurts me. It's a disaster. Do I, I gotta, I gotta, I No, I deploy the fucking drone now. Uh, hunters don't target drones. Only the Seekers do. So oh, that's pardon. a particular, <laughs> that particular <laughs> aspect is <laughs> incorrect. So, yes. So, yes. <clears throat> I was going to say, I, I... The flak, like, on the other hand, I'm will. Yes. Yes, I think the flag may have been a better example. Than that point, point. <laughs> flag would have been a good one. I do apologize. <laughs> no, 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 that's a totally fair correction. But I think the solution still applies. At the end of the day, it's the idea of like, then you use your juggernaut, or then you use your phalanx, or then you use your, your purifiers, right? Like, so to answer the question, the, the drone shield strategies will be extremely like useful in all the situations they previously were unless you see a base full of viral turrets and remember the support turrets are a um targetable are, turret shoot the yeah, damn thing you have to give something up to use that <laughs> so and you, you like you said you have to get you have to get rid of something and then that goes full circle to what dr phil said it's a strategy if you go into a base and you see that you're just not going to be able to go into bases and just, you know, pick whatever you want to pick and then, just, you know, throw your Omega Sandstorm and your your um, Omega Titan. And then for the people who have the twin, not twin Titan shit, what's the one? It is twin Titans when you attack a base. So it's like you, you're you just not going to be able to go in and then walk away and make a sandwich. Same thing with the Herald. You're not going to be able to come in with your Herald and just walk away and make a sandwich. You're going to have to think about it. Yeah, I, I agree, because I think there's more onus put on defense now, which I love, because I spent years and years and years uh, upgrading my base and all that there, and I still find it terrible to leave it undefended. Yeah. And I, I think the support turrets are designed to provide a little bit more diversity in your choices. And, and one of the things that's so important, and I, I think you would agree with me here, is that it is not reasonable to expect a perfect defense for every single situation. No. So therefore, it then makes reasonable sense to say, when you're creating strengths in some areas, you're creating weaknesses in others. And that's okay. That's what strategy is all about. That's how you adapt to your enemies, but it's also what allows your enemies to adapt to you. And that's also part of the fun. Like when you transition your base to stop your enemy thrashing you with a herald, and they come up with something else, then you're going to want to shift some damage to that something else, but maybe keep the defense against the Herald, but then they have to come in with something else. And that's, that's what we're enjoying now, believe it or not, this this last few weeks. That's what we're enjoying, debating what's a faction to go to. That's exactly what we want. 
And that's very much why we did the faction stuff as well, is we want to make that very much a strategic play style decision. And some things are going to be strong against other things. For example, you probably already noticed this, but if you look at right the, the corpus adaptive defenses bonus, that's really, really good against mm -hmm. rail launchers, hunters, uh, you know, you're going up a base with against a base with purifiers in it, right? Suddenly you are really strong. But if you go up against a base full of liberators, it doesn't even matter. That's asymmetry, right? That's that's strengths and weaknesses. And it's really important that with strength we also have weaknesses, or else you just have one goal. There's nothing shifting or dynamic or interesting. Then it's just I pick one thing and I use that one thing forever. And then the game becomes a grind no matter what you're doing because you're always doing the same thing. And we want you to do different things. We want you to think about the problems and solve the problems and then feel smart for solving the problems. And it's, and it's boring. It's boring yeah. if you play that way. I mean, it's like it's like you log in to get your resources, maybe run a raid, have your bonuses, get what you need, you start something, then you log off. Who wants to do that? That's like, you know, seek and find. Gaba, real quick, I want you to ask your question, but on the support turrets, is it going to be like, because we're going to have to give up a turret top to get the support turret. Yeah. I'm, trying to, I'm trying to get people to grasp that a little bit because of the, you know, the picture. I think they weren't understanding it. And the more people are understanding it. Is it going to be like the defensive turret tops or is it going to be a five second or do you know? Is it going to be long time base? Oh, is it going to oh, be instant? Like oh, we'll, we'll, we'll make them quick to change. Quick to change. Okay. It'll probably be a five second thorium. I don't know what the final pricing is, but one of the things we want to do with defensive strategy in general, um, and you may have noticed when you went through the release notes, we had the the dozer shift in this one for defensive yes. content. Yes. yes. So yes. Um, I love that. And, again, and like we want, like again, we want changing around defensive strategies to be less progressively less and less obnoxious <laughs> um messing with your base can be a lot of work we I, and I, i'm gonna i'm gonna get in before it's mentioned we have definitely also heard the feedback about saving multiple templates but we don't have any timetable for that yet we haven't started down that road but that's something i'm interested in because the end goal is that shifting your strategy shouldn't be painful it should be something where you're like i dream it and then i execute on it and it's just you don't, we don't want you to have to spend days to, to, you know, shift around your whole base. And that's going to be especially important in things like Warpath, where you're, that defensive strategy is going to come into play, and you're going to want to dynamically change based upon what you're having to deal with from your enemies. Okay, so Dava, there you go. He put in the side chat, he wants to expand on his questions about the bunkers. Go for it, because that's part of base defense, Dava. Ask your question. So uh, a lot of people seem to like a, uh, the uh, they want to align with a certain faction. Um, so let's say let's use the corpus one. A lot of people love the corpus because of the uh, like if a juggernaut hits like a Hades, it's not going to kill it one shot or the herald. That's that's lovely, but uh, that means that you would have, from our understanding as a community, it seems that we would have to have Spartans in our bunker because having anything else besides Spartans. Would ne would negate uh, the the thing. Now, I was initially under the assumption that when you busted a bunk, it was only when you busted a bunker open that it would it would uh, negate it. But a lot of the people in the community have been saying that just having the libs in a fully healed bunker will negate it. Well, we yes. tested it live well, last week. Yeah, we te and I tested it yesterday, and that's the that's the case. If you have libs in your corpus, you lose your bonus. Can you, so what Dab is trying people, to, go ahead Dab, I'm sorry. A lot of are, like, a lot of people, like myself, I'm not, if I go to Corpus, I'm not going to, I'm not putting Spartans in my bunker. I prefer Libs and, and Commandos, and so I'm not going to be able to use, there's no ben, There's no defensive bonus benefit for me to have in Corpus. I'm going to mainly use it for offensive. So that's, uh, but, yeah. yeah, I was going to say that's that's an accurate assessment. So there's a couple of questions, one that's very important that comes from that. I mean, I think we know that Acolytes, Liberators, and Spartans EK, which I would each of call, refer to them as sort of the infantry backbone <laughs> of their factions. So the question then that I would ask is, are Spartans themselves a little bit underwhelming? Yes. Very. The crap. 
Yeah. So you might yeah. say that if we started pursuing more regularly live balance updates, perhaps that would be something we would address in a future update. That would be fantastic. That would be more than reasonable. Yeah, yeah. Take take the bunkers out of the equation and let us have whatever we want in our bunkers, and then everything else on base defense has to match your faction unit. And I think that would be lovely because, I mean, I love my libs. I do, and I'm not looking forward to taking them out of my bunkers because I've chosen to stay with Corpus. Yeah, and I I, I will say this. I will I will be a little of a of a, a st uh, what's the word I'm looking for? Jackass on this, maybe. Um, mm -hmm. Simply due to being a bit stubborn, but I do think, and I hear your points, I think it is okay to, hear me out on this, to require the Spartans in the bunkers if the Spartans themselves were a little bit better. Um, Liberators are a great unit. Yes. But part of the reason that we made the choice to require bunkers to match up to your faction is because we wanted if I'm an attacker and I'm going into your base or if you're an attacker going into someone else's player base if you see that their buff is enabled you're like okay I know that you're going to be more powerful because you have this buff and that means your stuff is going to be harder to kill in the case of Corpus or it's going to hurt harder, or I'm not going to be able to stun it, depending on the faction. I know you have this extra power, but remember, with every strength comes a weakness. I do know that you're going to have this extra power, but now I also know what you're going to have in your bunkers. And that's the trade-off. Oh, yeah. Right? Get some power, but the attacker gets some knowledge. And so if Spartans are more viable... And, and they won't ever be liberators because liberators are liberators. Acolytes are acolytes. Spartans should stay Spartan. Uh, but they, 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 so they won't ever be exactly the same. But if they're all what I would call viable units, balanced units, then... If you want to talk about balance, I will say with uh, the new Jericho tech that you put out the uh, gold range tech, I think it's well priced. It's perfect. Awesome. What price is it, by the way? 50K. There, fifty oh, thousand. Oh, that's that is bargain. It's beautiful. Get it. <laughs> oh, for that new four update. Yes. Yep. Yep. Sure. Yes. We're <clears throat> trying to look for some areas where we can better price some stuff. One of the things I've talked about before is uh, how if we're going to do some adjustments in the event, and I can talk very briefly about that because I think pricing is important, and. I think we've been overpricing some things in the event. I don't think we've been overpricing everything, but we have been overpricing some things. And specifically what we're going to adjust is, as you guys know, we put on sale certain units every month that are relevant for uh, the month's uh, event block. Pardon me. So that sale price was a previously a 10% discount. We're going to increase that to a 50% discount. So all Sentinels units in the upcoming event will have a 50% discount on their event XP prices uh, over their standard pricing. So for players that don't have them, they should be able to get on board and get some units even during the very event and then use those units if they want in the faction track. Uh, real quick, throw it in there real fast. How many support turrets can we have? Because I think initially somebody said five, then somebody said three. How many support turrets can we have? Will you be limiting that? So. There's, uh, again, two answers to that. Answer one is every platform you have in the game can be linked to one support turret per type. So we are shipping, and we don't actually have any plans for a fourth support turret type, but we are shipping with three support turrets. That means if I have, say, a rail launcher, I can link it to one of each of the three. So I can do that. The second part of the answer is there's actually you can have as many support turrets as you have standard platforms. But remember, with every one, you do trade off one of your standard platform turrets. Okay. So it is a possible okay. strategy that you could have 15 support turrets, link three to each heavy platform, and just make your heavy platforms a nightmare for anyone. But of course, heavy platforms is. typically have a very hard counter as well. So like, let's say, let's say your base is being attacked frequently by the Herald. Well, what you do then is you switch a couple of your heavies to the fusions, 
And each hunter is going to be like, you know, and we're still tuning the final values, but a single hunter will deal as much damage as three or four hunters to the herald. So it'll be like you have eight hunters in your base. Mm -hmm. Very good. So, uh, I call uh, hacks. <laughs> okay, so I, have, I, have, I have a max, a max flood on my CC. Can I get a support turret for my CC? Um. Um. I <laughs> was expecting sorry, that one. Can you ask that question again? Sure. I have a maxed flood turret on my brand new spanking maxed CC. Can I put a support turret on my flood turret that's on my CC? That's a very good question. Right now, no, but we okay. are willing to be flexible on that if players want it. So right oh, now, we want it. We want it. We all want it. There you go. Yeah, we have. I'm canceling an upgrade now, so I'm there. I'm on this. <laughs> yeah, right I'd be now. willing to trade something off so I could put something on that uh, command zone. Uh, well, so here, here's what I can say. We will not ship with that, but since that is your feedback, if that remains your feedback after we launch, we will seriously consider doing that. Right now, the rule is you link a uh, support turret only to a heavy or standard platform. And it can be any version of the heavy platform or any version of the standard platform, but that's okay. currently the way that it is being put together. Okay. But I'm, I'm not at all opposed to having it connect to uh, the CC as well, if that continues to be um, player desire after they've tried out the feature. All right. May the I one, ask a question there? Um, That's yeah. what, oh. Go for it. Oh. Just, uh, it was from Slim Shady. He's on the YouTube channel there. He, he's one of the younger players. We're getting a lot of younger players, especially in our clan there, and they're just really loving this new new style of, of kick side there. And he wants to know, will, will we ever see the expert heroes in events or any other format of gaining them rather than buying them with gold? That's a good question. Um, we don't have any specific plans one way or the other, but it would not be a massive. It's not. It wouldn't. It wouldn't require much for us to do that. So maybe that's something where at the start. I, I can't say at the start because I don't. I don't know what our, our planning schedule is like at the moment. But for example, maybe the gear store would be a reasonable place to bring those heroes back to let people get them. And I'm, I'm not at all opposed to that. So there's there's no immediate plans, but I, I have no opposition or argument against that. Um, that would be very you? good because uh, the amount of new players we're getting is, is quite high this last few months. Yeah. yeah. No, or, I, or, are you up to suggestions? Like, like Data King coming back. He missed yeah. he missed the, um, the Jericho pack, and, and in that same vein, so there were people who did make those purchases. Yeah. Um, he, he missed that pack, so he's wondering, had wondered if it would come up. But then the, the I've been getting a lot of PMs since you guys came out with those packs, and the people took advantage of them. They got some of these heroes that they wanted. They're making some strategies about what factions they want to join, what's good for this, what they're asking these fantastic questions in all the group pages, and they and they wanted to know so you. One of the packages I got, the hero came out. I already had the hero, but I, there was one tech I was missing. I spent the 50 gold because there was one tech that I was missing. I had everything else that was in there. So these packs came out. They were just the heroes. So the players wanted to know, do you know? And if you don't, that's okay because I know the, the marketing person. Do you yeah. know, will the next packs be packages of the techs? Like there's people out there that are willing to pay gold, even though they have all the other techs, but they need HH2 targeting. I'm just using that as an example for Jericho. And I know there's other packs, and I, guys, I know there's other heroes, but the one I hear about the most is, are Jericho's techs. So right. that's what I'm kind of asking. I've, heard, I've definitely heard feedback for HH2, and there are various other ones that people have expressed an interest in as well. So Rapid fire. I, I will pass that along to the people who sort of make those determinations. And I think to be honest, I think I've heard them discussing that. So I, I don't actually have an insight into a particular timetable for that, but we do know there's a demand there. And um, I, I, it is actually sort of technically speaking for various reasons, it's, it's easier for us to do those sort of side offers than it is to put it into uh, some other avenue that requires actually a bit more planning and, and, and effort. So, um, which isn't to say that we won't or wouldn't do it, but I would say in the near term, it is more likely that we will see some sort of offer for tech. I think that's way more likely. 
But in the mid to long term, will those expert heroes come up again through some non-gold related means? Yeah, I think that's also a reasonable assumption. It's just I don't know when. Because if some you, of the groups have been telling their players, oh, yeah, those packs are nice, but don't, this, the, uh, honestly, and seeing this on the, and having to comment, no, don't bother buying it because if you don't have the text, it's worthless. So the reason why I asked you that question is, is, hey, you don't know there's not, the guy's already going to spend 179 gold, 75 right. gold, 97 gold. I'm just listing the prices that just most recently came out, 74 gold. So they're already buying those hero packages, and then you hear somebody comment uh, oh man you wasted your money because it, you have the hero but if you don't have the tech it's not worth it the guy already spent the money on the gold and you just made it feel like i'm sorry i'm talking about the group pages you made yeah. it feel like shit for getting a hero so i wanted to the people who are watching the show now but the people who are going to watch the show in the gazillions we're going to break another record tomorrow i promise you dear when they find out you're on the show tonight um I wanted them to hear from you that it's not out of the question that they won't see an offer for a tech package. Here's and then the so they spend another 40, 50 gold, you know, maybe 25. I don't know. It depends on the tech package. Yeah. One tech Jericho package I got was. Uh, uh, yeah. He was out for about maybe this time last week, I think. Maybe a couple of days. I'm, I'm probably in or out of that. Nobody knew HH2 was going to drop in the September gear store. The guy who. Right. Wolfie got Jericho. I know Wolfie got Jericho. And now yeah, he's got HH2 because right. it, it dropped in the gear store. Yep, thank you Even for, if for you... my joker. <laughs> <laughs> Those are the CS gear. <laughs> well, the, thing, the heroes do come out eventually through some form or another. We, we pay a feedback or kick size. Uh, I don't know how you really pick stuff to go in the gear store. Do you draw it out of a hat or something? Uh, no, it's a, uh, whatever, whatever the draws get made, it gets put it's in the crystal, and then people buy it. <laughs> but that spreadsheet's <laughs> limited. I mean, we've had this conversation, and Phil knows this. It takes a lot to code that gear store, and only so much stuff. Guys, I'm not talking about just Kicksight. Only so much in any game prizes can fit into that spreadsheet of code. You can't put everything that Kicksight has ever offered in the gear store. I mean, well, I say I, I'm gonna never speak in absolutes. It's probably highly unlikely that you would ever see everything for everything that's out there ever in the gear store. That would just be a huge amount of code, too much to choose from. From and I'm sorry, but it would probably be clusterfuck. Yeah, <laughs> I, I actually want to echo that sentiment. Where this is where you, the community, being vocal, especially on the forums, but you know, on this show as well, but but on the forums. Uh, is super valuable to us because there are instances where we are accurately able to assess, uh, you know, we, we of course have analytical tools and we look at all the, the data and all that, and there, there are times when that is sufficient and there are times when it is not sufficient. So you guys communicating and being active, uh, do, do, keep doing that. And the community has been, been very active lately as well on the forums, which is great. Um, and you know, I'm personally trying to be more engaged in the forums as well, which I've had my ebbs and flows with. I'm really trying, I'm trying really hard to keep it going because I, I actually like interacting with the community, believe it or not. Even when I get some of that rage, you know, it comes from this great passion we all have for this game. So I want it. I want that passion. And uh, feedback about like HHU targeting tech or even some of the other heroic tech, like let us know what you want. And I mean, for crying out loud, at the end of the day, if we can sell you something for money, we're not going to not do that. Let's be real here. Right. Yeah. Exactly. Speaking of selling something to me for money, uh, Dina Shredder Tech, please. Thank you. <laughs> Shredder. Well, I have one, one suggestion. And with the H22 targeting come out, like I missed two years of the game. And I'm just get I'm six months back into it. I haven't had any opportunities to get expert Jericho. Is there mm -hmm. any way possible this event or next event where even if it's a million event XP, if expert Jericho could be added to the gear store so I can buy the H two H H two targeting from the, the gear store, store and then have Yeah, the event Hellhound? store. Should be able to buy yes, HH2 HH2 a just buy the damn targeting. But all I want is the like I have all the other heroes. The only two I don't have are Expert Dorn and Expert Jericho, and the only one that I want is Jericho. And yeah. I don't care. Like I'm one of the few people I don't care how much event XP I have to spend to get it. If right. it's available, I will get it. 
<laughs> no, I, I, I appreciate that. I, I honestly don't have an answer for you. I'll need to talk to the people who handle sort of the distribution side of things. But like, like I said, I, I think it is important to emphasize that the continual feedback that I'm hearing from, from many of you, especially regarding HH2 and Jericho, uh, is noted. And I will, I will pass that feedback along, absolutely. Um, uh, Peel, real quick, throw that question out before his battery dies on his laptop about the distance. Let me, see how I'm doing. Let me just make sure we're doing okay. Yeah. All right. We're still doing all right, but I should probably head out in, in 10 or 15 minutes. All right, Peel, I asked that question about the, the space. Go ahead. Yep. So back to the support torrents for a sec. Um, what's the minimum or maximum distance you can have them apart but still have them linked? Like, do they have to be touching each other or... Are they able to be on the complete opposite side of the base? No, that's a good question. They actually must be physically touching. And there's okay. there's feedback in the UI. It's actually really cool. I'm looking forward to going, you know, sharing <coughs> this, and this and so forth. But like when you when you butt up a support dirt when you're in placement mode, like the the square changes to show the link, you know, the footprint of the of the buildings. You're like, oh, okay, I'm placing it correctly to get the link. Because we don't want anyone to have to like be like, is it touching? Is it not touching? It'll it'll give you that feedback. All right. Now, if I cool. if I have it if I have it by like let's say I'm touching four avalanches, how do I and then I set that down, and it's touching two of them. How do I pick which one I want it to? Or like if it's got two avalanches on one side and a hunter on the other, how do I pick that I want just the hunter and not the avalanches? Yeah, that's actually a, that's a really good question. So the um, support turrets can only link to a single platform, and if you attempt to link them to multiple platforms, they will link to none. Uh, and that's actually not as much of a pain in the ass as, as you'd think, but it's, it's actually, again, we have very, very clear feedback about whether or not the link is successful or not. And what that does is it means when you're putting together your base, you're going to actually have to be, again, super strategic about the positioning of like what you put where and wh what side you put your link on. Um, because if you, if you link up and like you have a susceptibility to people coming around and getting that particular turret from behind, uh, then they might be able to take out that that support turret um, without having to go through. Now, a quick question: you Gotta watch for it. Uh, you know, if you link up three or more turrets, as you say, it won't link. Could you prepare it for like late game in your base? So if like let's say they've taken out two of the turrets that are touching it, the little one. Uh, I'm sorry, you cut out for just a very brief second. Can you can you say that one more time? Uh, basically, you know, as you say, you, can't, you can only link up with one turret. Yeah, three turrets surrounding it. If let's say to take out the two avalanches and your hunter is still remaining, link up to the hunter. Yeah, it it would in that case. Um, we've explored some options, and right now that's the plan. There's a risk of that ending up being non-performant, like to have it be pulling constantly during the battle um, to, to see what is currently attached to it. But what I can say is, it's probably not a good idea to set up that way strategically. Because while it's true that the turret would activate and start providing its bonus once the surrounding material was destroyed, well, then there's a good chunk of the battle when the support turret isn't doing anything and isn't being valuable to you. So I, I actually would, just strategically speaking, discourage that setup, though it should work. That's a fair point. I, would I have a... Oh, go ahead. No, 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 no. I, never mind. Go ahead. Go, go, go. go. <laughs> I, was, I have uh, a suggestion. We talked about on the last show that we had a couple of days ago. Uh, plot fighting. That retreat option is a pain in the ass. And mm -hmm. we had a couple ideas mm -hmm. because it's a war game. When you retreat in a war, chances are you have arrows coming at your back. So you take some sort of damage as you retreat. Two of the ideas that we came up with was you take if you press that retreat button, your tune automatically gets sent back to your base with 25 to 50% damage. Mm -hmm. Another one that we came up with was if you retreat, before you took any damage whatsoever, or even after you took damage, if you touch that retreat button, you cannot deploy that plat for an hour. Is there any way something like that could be implemented to people for being stupid and leaving plats out on the map? <laughs> <laughs> I like I like those ideas. There's um, there's other possible solutions, and I'm just sort of shooting the, the shit a little here. But I I also think a compelling option is to say. Uh, when you snipe a platoon, you get an ambush bonus, and that platoon just can't retreat for two minutes. So you get two that would be awesome. That's what well. you're thinking as well. Yeah. Um, or maybe some combination of these things. So 
I'm open to just about any of those. The first thing I'll say, though, is our all of our PvP energies are focused on Warpath uh, right now, which will not address that particular problem. So I don't want to kick the can too far on it because I actually think uh, platoon versus platoon fighting is a really cool part of the game that serves very little purpose at the moment. <laughs> Um, and also is a low, like what I would again, what I would call a low integrity system because of the very things you've just described, the easy out. Um, so uh, I definitely think that's something that we'll want to chip away at. Um, but first, Warpath. Okay, can, can I also leaving their platoons out? As for somebody who does leave their platoons out, I will interject the four words that I like to use very, very well. Back. Stupidity is no excuse. Oh, darn. <laughs> if you're stupid <laughs> enough to leave your platoon out, you're stupid enough to let it get killed. I do. I mean, I, I have buggies and rocket and, and uh. I, little... I got buggies everywhere. I don't yeah, care. I got about. buggies everywhere. I got buggies so I can get where I need to get when somebody's being an asshat. But I don't care if you kill my buggy. And you could post it 50 million times in global chat. Go ahead. I yeah. like, hunt my buggy. I don't care. All right. I want to shift gears. This is from Lady Waterberg. I'm going to throw it in there because I think I have an idea what you're going to say. And I don't want your battery to die. Yes, I know how much battery time you have on that laptop, so I know how long you've been sitting there. Yeah, yeah. Don't want you to cut out. Okay, this is a total shift of gear, because I know you guys are working on this. The lag and the DC issues. I know last night was an exception with KXL. So the players want to know, again, you have the regular players, and they were all through the YouTube chat tonight. Are you guys still working on the lag and the DC issues, and can you give us a slight update on that? Even yeah. though on that that you're going to bring probably a Q&A out on that as an update, too, as the state of the game. But could you expand on that just a little bit? Yeah, what, uh, there, yeah I definitely want to see Sobocop get uh, back on the forum to talk a little bit about that. Um, that's part of the answer to that. My current understanding is that a lot of the initiative that we started when we talked about, I mean, first of all, it's all still going. But as I also want to be, I want to be very, very aware of the fact of how many times you've been sort of promised improvements there and been kind of let down by it. So my current understanding is that we'll start to see a majority of that initiative come to fruition between uh, this month's event and the October event. Um, and of course it will be an ongoing thing, but that's my current understanding about when those improvements will start to manifest for players. And I still don't honestly know the magnitude of all of it. They've talked me through some of the architectural stuff they're talking about. And I mean, you guys have read, you know, Sobocop doesn't talk, uh, he talks very technically, as he should, mm -hmm. um, but as a consequence, some of what he says is even over my head. So um, it's like, it, it sounds good, let's, uh, and I would just ask that people reserve judgment until we uh, get through this event and see that next month window. That's when I'm hoping we'll see those improvements and what, what my current understanding is of when we'll start seeing those improvements. That's, and that's Thank why I wanted, I knew that you had an answer. And I know for some people when he makes that post that is a little bit too technical and, Dr. Phil, me, some of the other guys that, you know, do that for a living. I mean, not gaming, but do that kind of stuff for a living. We help. And worst comes to worst, I send you a message and I say, hey, this was way, way too high. I'm having a hard time explaining. It. Can you come on live? Because then we could just point people to the link and they can rewatch the show if they don't miss it. Yeah, totally. Um, or Dava, ask about those legendary units because YouTube is going crazy because we're not asking him about it. Uh -oh. All right, guys. Got a few questions about the legendaries. Yeah, what's up? Um, so, is there a way that we can reduce the th th Thor slash res cost for upgrading uh, the tech? Is there um, is the repairs going up for these units since we're getting upgrades to them? And then, can we shrink uh, uh, the let me, let me throw away at them as you can up, or I'll forget because my brain is, you know, <laughs> not that good. Come on. Um, so first question, upgrade times on components, or pardon me, upgrade costs on components. Uh, to be entirely frank, we didn't actually evaluate those costs. The only major cost that we evaluated is we knew the legendary mega tank was out of sync with the other two for its upgrade costs, and we did make that adjustment, um, but we did not evaluate the tech pricing. So we can have a look at that and definitely evaluate that. Uh, it's probably uh, because of the way we originally positioned the legendary units, it's probably way up there. So uh, I can take a look at it. But I, I can't answer that one more specifically off the cuff. Uh, the second repair question time? of repair times. Repair times are not going up for the legendary. Sweet. Um, just for comparison, one gold tech. If I if I remember correctly, one gold tech 
to one S old SF Gold Tech was 120 million uh, Thor, and that's just two levels on the legendary. And the Gold Tech was like the highest, highest uh, costing thing at the time. Yeah, I, th I think it's like 60 million Thorium per upgrade, and I'm not quite sure on the res, but. With bases that are paying out, I mean, the VK-80s are getting tougher, and, you know, they're keeping up with our units, and they're paying out 50, so, uh, yeah. yeah it's, so it's there's a lot of Thor and grinding for that to upgrade these techs. I will say this, the, the legendary techs are pretty strong, especially when you use the fact that you can have five or six equipped to a given unit, as opposed to, say, the faction stuff where you're only getting three plus the diamond tech now. Um, so they're, they're really potent, but I, I'm not necessarily justifying the prices that exist. I'm just saying there's some reason to say that they could be valid. But I, I did not do an evaluation of those prices. Uh, so I, like I said, I'll, I'll take a look at it. All right. Cool. Sounds good. Then we got one more. Uh, so the legendary units, I believe they're all 800 space. Yes. And we yes. have, we have 3,000 space in our platoon. We were actually yes. discussing this earlier on the show. Uh, that would give us three legendary Hellfires plus air, and we couldn't use we couldn't use them in combination with each other. Like we would only get one of each with each other, plus air. After they get the, the benefit from the um, from the what, War Factory, you get um, you get some reduction of that, and the end result is you can have five in a platoon. And I want to talk to why that is. Now, first off, I'll say that the goal is. The number of them shouldn't actually matter per se. Like they, as a unit, should be really powerful. Um, so if the five of them in a platoon is not really powerful, um, or at least on par or slightly better than all the current stuff that we have, then we'll have to nudge them up maybe a little bit more. Because um, the goal, pardon me, is that they're slightly higher tier than all of the existing faction stuff in isolation as a single unit of, of five. Because you can only have the five. Uh, the other piece of the puzzle is the reason that there's so few of them that you're that you have in your community in the moment is that actually increases the uh, magnitude of any given choice. So that is to say, let's say you're only using the legendary units and you swap out a single one that affects twenty percent of your platoon space. So it's a very meaningful choice to say I'm going to use you know three one and one or three of the the legendary mega tanks, and then use you know my air my air team. So it's very very meaningful what you select, but each one packs a very significant significant punch in that regard. <clears throat> and the third and final reason that we decided to make them so big, and again, hopefully the power compensates for the amount of size they take up. Um, but the other reason we wanted to do that is because the more units you're simultaneously controlling, uh, it actually gets a little tougher to control them in battle, and we wanted to make it so that. Players who like to micro their units, who like to provide individual commands to their units throughout combat as opposed to Ruby, can actually click on these five separate units and execute with them pretty well. If we get up to higher unit counts, that gets harder and harder to do. So with these five units, you can actively micro them and control them in combat and issue individual uh, attack commands um, pretty easily and be controlling your whole platoon from a very micromanaging perspective, which is what we want. We want these units to involve that strategic control. Are they going to be exclusively PvP units? Because you can't micro heal PvP units. That is correct. They are exclusively PvP units, and they're designed to only go in those PvP platoons. He was talking more about micromanaging, not micro healing, oh. like no, like no. where you where you can yeah. click each individual and control each individual. Um. <laughs> Yeah, that's what I use the the support keys for the one, two, three, four, the hotkeys. Yep. I, I I'm a I'm a micromanager of I'll control four or five things at once, and I love doing that. And because I, I love that you guys are bringing strategy back, and so um, yeah, I can now use those hotkeys again to micromanage. I love the, I love the hot key. and that's another thing is Dab has been helping people. I'll speak up. I want to pat him on the back before somebody goes to another question. He's been getting people into the Google Hangouts that are either returning to the game, never knew about hotkeys. You know, say they were like 30-ish, 35. They're just trying to figure out the strategy, and they're coming back. Or people who've never played the game, like 
um, Anton was saying, we have a lot of very new younger players, and not just younger in age, but new, new, new. And they're really going at it because they're enjoying it so much. So they're really saying that they love this, but they didn't know about the hotkeys. These are things we all take for granted because we use them all the time. I, so, I really appreciate you guys talking about those things. We know our tutorial is not really sufficient. And <laughs> that we want to do. <laughs> 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 uh, firing uh, somebody or take the tutorial down and reassign. I know that's not your position. Reassign that person to something else and we will be their tutorial. <laughs> and Tom will be getting them in a hangout. Well, you guys are doing a way better job than uh, certainly our tutorial is currently doing. That's for sure. Oh, I'm a but, poor person. Right. Let me ask I, questions I before he dies. <laughs> um, I've got uh, two questions. The first one is back to the platoon sniping. Um, yeah. When you when your tune is getting hit, we all the only button you have is the retreat button. Can we please get a leave button? Otherwise, we're stuck in um, we're stuck in that one battle if we don't want to retreat. Yeah, that's, that's a great point. Um, you know, honestly, there's probably some other flaws in, in the, the platoon versus platoon because it's it's so underutilized and the only ways it is utilized is sort of a grief annoyance method. So as we start fixing those issues, um, I completely agree with that point. I have, I have no argument against that. I'm totally in favor of it. Um, but again, I, I've got to emphasize there's no immediate timetable for addressing the platoon versus platoon stuff, but I like a lot of what we've talked about on that front. And um, the second question is to do with the workshop and the new diamond tech. Hmm. Considering the fact that, you know, across all faction units, we get 1,500 space. And I just had a look. The diamond tech also requires an extra 500 space uh, to equip. So are we going to get an increase in te uh, workshop space for all the units? Or are we um, going to have to sacrifice one of our other tech for that new tech? Great question. Um, that actually sounds like an oversight that we need to fix. You will not have to sacrifice one of your other uh, techs. So if that is currently the way it is, I will look into that and we will get that sorted. You're supposed to be able to get the diamond tech in addition to your other tech. Very Make good. it zero space like the war paints, I yeah. guess. With, with that particular diamond tech, somebody said to me earlier, there are levels on it. Now, is it similar to the normal uh, faction tech where it's no upgrades at all? Or is it similar to the old tech where you have to use Resin Thorium to upgrade it to X level? It's You do have to upgrade it. There are only four levels for it. Um, that's that's so it fine. Goes, uh, I forget the exact curve escalation, but there's there's uh, four levels. So obviously it starts at one, so you've only got to upgrade it three times. Excellent. Oh, is, that, is that Thor and Raz? Or is it time? Uh, it is time. Okay, it is time. Uh, okay. I, think it's, okay. I think it's three. I'm... I'm I'm going to talk out of my ass and regret it, but I think it's three, five, and seven days. Woo! Uh, that sounded oh, lovely okay. coming from your ass. Not too bad. Finally, my workshop has something to do. <laughs> I know. <laughs> it's kind of what we were figuring. It's like, you know, okay, it makes kind of sense. Like, the benefit of it is it is unlimited, so you get it for one liberator, you have it for all your liberators. <laughs> speaking um, for, of, speaking yeah. of workshop items, actually, it's it's one error that I, I think I, I talked to Skip about earlier on in the week. But what the fuck is a snow bear platoon error? It's it's only it's only look at those eyes. <laughs> it's only in the workshop. It's he doesn't know it. 21, 22, and it's snow bear. That's all it says. It he doesn't know it. Your game is running it's slow. Adorable. Oh, yeah. Okay, uh, so something is wrong, and I know it's not any of those because it only happens in the one spot where my workshop my seems workshop. to go up and down on the time. No matter what it's doing, if I leave my base and go back into my base, it's either gone up by fifteen minutes or gone down by an hour. And it confuses the fuck out of me. And I cannot I put my finger on what that error is. Well, that was happening to me with Omega 20. I think that's an engineer's way of saying, let's name this something. And then, then somebody said, yes, yeah, Snow Bear. Because that error started first happening while we still had snow on the map. Or, or we had just lost the snow and people were bitching in forums <laughs> about not having the snow and they liked it. And then all of a sudden this error comes up and it's called Snow Bear. And I'm like, oh my god. So I had snow bear platoons way don't. back in the day when, like, I don't know what think that. On the map, and it would just say snow bear, and it actually wasn't there, and it was like a glitch or something. That one, <laughs> right there, that one for you, Terry. I'll see if I can get to the bottom of the snow bear mystery. 
Yes, it's actually it's actually very adorable when someone sends it because it's the twenty two fifty one error. Originally, <laughs> when it, it it was it used to come up once in a while and then it disappeared. Yeah. And then some people thought maybe it was some not like April Fools, but like a later in the year kind of April Fools. And it's okay. becoming more like it started like maybe midsummer becoming more prevalent, and now it's happening a lot more. So yeah, but, everyone, you know, yay. Yeah, Dr. Phil and I said at the same time, you know, maybe we should, and I was going to send you something, but actually I was going to send it through somebody. I was actually going to talk to John maybe and say, what the heck with the snow bear thing? Why is this supposed to be funny? Why is it happening all of a sudden? <laughs> it does happen more often in the workshop, but it happens on the map too. But anytime somebody sends me a message on KXL or Facebook, and I say, were you in their workshop? And I could tell you 95% of the time they said, how did you know it was in my workshop when I got it? Yeah. So uh, No, I mean, that's, uh, it's hilarious. I have no idea. So I'm going to have to ask some people. I, like, <laughs> I actually think, I actually think that is a worthy end note. Well, end on the question, I have no clue on because my skip is correct. My battery is starting to peter out and yes. I should be heading home for the evening. So, um, uh, that, that should occur. I'm going to send you something, and since the legendary Data King is here, because he wanted to ask you a good question, but I think I know what your answer is going to be, but I know your battery is dying. Can you please let Data King know that when I send it to you, that you will really consider it, and then maybe consider coming back on the show and actually like giving us some more information? Yeah, I, what, what was the one question? I'm sorry. Oh, well, it's going to be detailed, but go ahead, Jay. Do you want to blow it's it real fast? It's going to be detailed. It goes back to the whole uh, bundles and all that stuff like that. Is why do we not have a shop tab? You said it yourself. It's like anything that's that would make us money, why, like why don't you have that? Where it would be you know, units bundled with tech or multiple units bundled or just tech bundles. Why, why don't we have that yet? I mean, having like something, for old, something for old bundles, I think – a collection for all the old bundles that you guys offered put them there yeah, I, I actually i mean l like you said i mean i i, I might have commented on that on the forum but I, I think it's a good idea I, I don't actually have a good answer for you I, all i can say is sometimes things which are bleeding obvious are sometimes the things you miss so yeah. uh I, I don't i don't have an, an excuse but you're totally right i think it's a really solid idea um so I, that's another one that i can pass along to the guys who handle sort of that the offer in the sales section and stuff and be like yo why don't we got this because it makes sense. Yeah, I mean, it's a pure, it's it's a win it's a win win for both the community and for you guys. I mean, it's going to make you nothing but nothing but money, and it would it like you talked about earlier. It's it's much easier for you guys to put those offers in the game for these twenty four hour periods and things things of that nature. But then again, it's even easier if you have one central location where you can put all those bundles in. Totally. And interchange them in and out, just kind of similar to like the gear shop or, or the event the event shop, something similar like that. You guys can always change them, you know, according to the factions that are coming every month. Sentinels, we're going to run some Sentinel bundles and things of that nature. Yeah, you know, and it alleviates a lot of problems all, all all over the place because you know you can have them available year round. You know, so yeah, just just I'm out there. Sorry, there. Somebody who only gets paid once a month. You guys offer the bundle and are like, shit, I don't get paid till week after next. You know, right. if they had a tab yeah. and they could go back and buy it, it's a win, like well, you said. Was with, win with the Jericho, I missed the other one. Just to have on that there, uh, Slim Shady's asked a wee question. Like, he's a, a new player there. He's been playing since December. And he's missing a lot of the, the old gold tech for, like, even Special Forces Drum Magazine for commandos and things like that. Oh, yeah. That would be ideal for a player like that there because he doesn't even know what they look like. He hasn't even... You can't yeah. achieve that there. Totally. No, it's, it's all very reasonable. Like I said, I, I, I don't disagree with you. I mean, it's a, it sounds like a reasonable business proposal, like, again, sort of from the objective perspective. And then I get how it benefits everybody as well. So I think yeah, it's... Yeah, I just, I, I just want a small finder's fee. Just a small one. Yeah. Well, <laughs> <laughs> small finder's fee. noted. Can we noted. Can they get, name it the data tab? <laughs> no, yeah. I don't want a name. I want a fee. I don't want a name. What's I want a fee. fee. Oh, come on. Pretty good. Let's be real here. <laughs> Call it the data tech. Just yeah. remember the 13th rule of acquisition. Anything worth doing is worth doing for money. <laughs> <laughs> right. 
We're going to let you go because you're going to just vanish. Thank you, thank you so much for doing this off the cuff. So I got to. No, it's awesome because, I mean, you were in the Skype room telling me, I don't know if I can make it, maybe this. And then it was just like, awesome, bing, bang, boom. And the fact that you were willing to jump in, I really do appreciate it. I know we were throwing things all over the place. Thank that's you, all right. Really. That's Thank you. Be. I'll try and come back when we get near uh, Warpath territory, and we can talk about, you know, PvP a bit more and what 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 we're doing with Warpath and all that good stuff. So great. Uh, oh, that sounds great. Yeah, yeah, that hopefully, you guys enjoy the updates. And again, give us the feedback. We wanna we wanna keep adapting this game and and get it dialed in so that it's a good, fun, strategic experience on all fronts. So keep it coming, guys. Thank, Thank you, you very Thank much. You, Thank you, Wong Paper. Thank you. Good night. Good night. That was fantastic. Uh, the bestest. Tom, that sorry. Be all right, but I just wanted to. I, we he and I talked about this before, but I didn't want to. I didn't want to go a little crazy with with everything. But when he comes on, he does the laptop. He had skyped to me earlier because the maintenance was delayed. So I know he has a timer on that laptop for the battery pack. So every time, the one time when he has dropped out previously. And I was like, I I don't know. So I said, fine, I'm just going to put it on a timer. So I have my little um, cool timer. And I'm like, God, that battery's going to die in like seven more minutes. That laptop's going to just cut out. So that's why I'm sorry for being so forceful about asking the questions so quickly. It's all good. It's all good. And again, it's 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 one of those... It's one of those glorious things about having a show like this and a guy like Ron Tinker who will take that time out of what he's doing. I think he was supposed to go home like an hour and a half ago. but I am worried about whether or not he got the train or because he's not driving because he was drinking. So uh, if someone's coming to get him or if it's too late for him to catch the last train home, I'll, he'll call up his sweetheart. She'll come get him. Oh, I, hope, I hope so. And, uh... Honey, I'm sleeping in the office tonight. <laughs> he has done that. I think he has done that because I see him online and I it'll be like three o'clock in the morning and I, I can't sleep but I come in and I'm like I see his lights on I'm like please tell me you're not still in the office and and I and he was like go to bed skip and I was like Fuck, you're still in the office <laughs> like, what the hell? Course it's only beer. Like for him and I'm like you're not supposed to be there he was like I got a job to do you Hey, they've been bitching in forums. I got a job to do. <laughs> you know, we joke about whatever. Uh... We're appro we're approaching almost four hours on this baby right now. I mean, I well, I started late because it was my own damn fault. But um, we're gonna yeah. blow the doors off when people find out. And I, can I just say about that particular page? I won't name the name, but can I go on shackle for a second? Go nuts, baby! All right, for you fuckers, oh, for you fuckers out there. On all of these people in this panel and the people who are in the YouTube chat that have been trying to get posted the link to this show so that you guys could get information that was coming directly from the, the lead developer of the show who's actually willing to deal with the lead engineer who's Sobocop, who's actually willing to deal with the lead marketing manager. With the, he talked about things that is not his area. You didn't hear, I can't answer that because that's not me, and move on to the next question. He took in all that information. For those of you who wouldn't allow it on your pages or wouldn't approve the post, Fuck I'm going to quote Dr. Phil. Go eat a bag of dicks. Amen. <laughs> big one. Because I don't want any one of you to bitch and moan and complain to me or anybody else. You Bitch and moan to yourselves on your own fucking pages. Don't even try to come to the Unshackled page because, yes, I am a fucking admin. And if Dr. Phil's not on and I see you bitching and moaning about Kickside's lack of communication, I'm going to say it's your own fucking fault because there's a bunch of – no, I'm not going to use that word – Kevins out there – that wouldn't allow us to post that he came on the show tonight. So if you don't find out about it, it's because your admins of your page refuse to allow that information to be posted. You want the information from Kixi, then get rid of your admins and your dumbass mm, cunt mouth people who won't allow us to share the information. It doesn't have to come from me. I don't care who it comes from. Jesus, H Lord have mercy. I, I will say this, Skip. I love the fact that me and Charlie still make you say Kevin. 
I do. I do. But you know, when I had somebody say to me, when I said Kevin two, two shows ago, they were like, Hey, does Kevin mean a bad thing? Cause I'm starting to feel bad about my first name. <laughs> <laughs> we, we had that happen once. We kept calling. When I told him what Kevin meant. He goes, you don't think that about me. I said, no, that's the word we use. So I don't have to use it. I feel like I need to link the video to, to the Unchuckle page so that everyone can understand. I know, because if they had the video, they would understand it, and it would make sense to everybody. And I'm serious. As and I'm the rules like of Unshackled, it must stay on topic and constructive, or I will fucking delete it. Yeah, I mean, yeah. I don't, I'm, no naming and shaming here, because it's not just any one page. It's just, it's so frustrating to me that you, these people bitch and moan about not having information, and then you get someone who's willing to sit in the office three hours after he was supposed to go home, crack open, open a beer, grab a conference room, open up his laptop off the cuff and sit down and talk to the entire community. And you will not even allow us to post that to your pages because you got a two by four stuck up your ass, or maybe that's what you like and you haven't had a two by four lately, okay? <laughs> now I'll ship one from the United States I'll paint it for you if you like it painted. Hey, if you need studs on it, so it make and you can wiggle it around. Whatever it is that you need, so we can share information with the community. Because the people that you have running your pages, you should kick them and run the pages yourself. Shame on you for not allowing this to be posted live. Because some of those how to run the page. That's the problem. Well, I, I, every time I get added as an alt, they figure out it's me and I get kicked again. I was really surprised about the people who are on this panel that normally would get a post approved within a minute, five minutes, ten at the most. They also got denied. I mean, shame, 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 shame on all of you because of a, a few petty people within the game. Look at the, all these people in this panel. Look at the people in the YouTube chat. If you're watching right now and you're in the YouTube chat, look at all of these people and, and just imagine the information they're going to miss because they have to watch the replay, but they're going to miss all the comments and the questions in the YouTube chat. Yep. So there's this whole level of communication that your entire alliance and all your allied alliances that are on all your pages are going to miss. So if you get the information at all, shame on you because if you don't even allow it but if you're going to get it secondhand and you're going to miss a whole half of the conversation here's the thing here's the thing to add to that i've been on multiple pages for multiple reasons for quite some time most of them i'm not in anymore because of particular people for particular reasons that are political and i don't like to bring game politics into the show and if they continue to do that i will limit the invitations to watch the show. I will make this show fucking unlisted and only post it out to people I trust. And if this continues to happen and you blanket unshackled because I'm running the show or Skip comes on the show or Dobber's on the show or Fear's on the show or Anton's on the show or Godscope or King or Lady Warrior or Data King or even fucking Wolfing <laughs> or even anybody else that comes on uh, Debo and Slim Shady and a couple of the other and even Micah that we had on last weekend if people continue to to tarnish this I I run I I, I will admit I run I run the unshackled page with an iron fist I don't tolerate bullshit I don't tolerate bullying I don't tolerate political crap I don't tolerate shit that isn't war commander related unless it's really funny It's one of those things. I don't tolerate any of it because of what Unshackled is and what Unshackled is supposed to be and what it means to me and what it means to this community. I was out of the game six months. And 90% of that six months, I was here every week, nonstop, running the show regardless because I care for the community. As far as I can say, the game can, the game can go, go, go to a hell in a handbasket. It, the game could shut off tomorrow, and I would still be there for its community. The community would be pissed. I'd be dealing with 900 pissed off people, but I, could, <laughs> I would rather deal with 900 pissed off people than not deal with anything at all. There are too many fucking idiots. And regardless of the, the other show or the other pages or anything else, it 
gets to a point where I have said on multiple occasions, no, I am done. I wash my hands of them. I wash my hands of anyone involved with them. And if they don't want to let the information that we can provide or that wrong thinker, wrong thinker has provided on our brand and they can't do it, fuck them. Fuck them all. Yeah. Very That's well said. I just don't, I, whenever it comes to that, they'll really and truly in this day and age. It's so sad. Very disappointing. It is. It is. I mean, friends are enemies. How many times have we said this? Friends are enemies, and I'll use the 49 war as an example. I'm still getting messages about that. It cracks me up. The people were away for Labor Day, okay, in the United States. So there were people who were away. So no kidding. In addition to KXL going down last night, People sometimes take an extra day, but kids have been going back to school. But Labor Day is a big traditional thing here, end of summer, before the kids go back to school. So a lot of people miss part of that war um, that we had going on in 49. Okay, it's a war game, people. Yes, I'm in the Raid Alliance. So there were friendly tags and enemy tags. Just because you see that posted on, your, on a page, and then you go and you do your, God, this isn't fucking high school, Jesus H., you go and you take that little tiny thing that somebody posted, which I made the post. I wasn't asked. I wasn't begging. Oh, look, she's begging for help. I was like, no. If you got the balls, come to 49. Let's roll and rumble. Somebody took that little picture of that tiny little document of friends and enemies. Okay, that was Lonnie Johnson who posted it. He's the leader of RAID. So for RAID, those were the friends and enemy tags. That pissed people off. I'm still getting PMs about that. Well, that's not fair, Skip, because you're such and such allied and whatever. Fuck off, motherfucker. We were <laughs> inviting people who were bored to come to 49 and play old school War Commander. Yep. If we lost, yes, we lost. If we won, we won. It wasn't, oh, well, you're declaring these people enemy. No, we said if you come to 49, pick a side. If you're on raid side, these are the friendly and enemies. If you want to play devil's advocate, go join the enemy side and you'll fight against. I don't want to fight against you, Skip. Fuck you. Hit my base, you dumb fucker. <laughs> I'm going to come hit you. <laughs> yeah. Exactly. I don't care if you don't want to hit me. I don't care if you don't want to hit me. I'm going to hit you. And I wanted people to hit me because I wanted to be on live to watch. Yes, I have my video running 24-7. You think I want to sit and watch the fucking videos of goddamn dildos hitting my base all night? <laughs> no. I want to I wanna be on live and see if I can knock your dildo out of the sky. And one guy who did hit me, he was really surprised about some things I had in my base. Yes, I lost my entire tune. But the next thing you know, his little dildo was down to a sliver tiny of red. He just thought he would just kind of bang and slam and bang it. Uh-uh. When you get into Skipjack and she's awake, no, there is no slam bam. Thank you, ma'am. Now, so the next thing you know, he's bringing in support air. I learned two things about two turrets that I needed to change. I want the war. I want to be hit. Don't surround my base. Don't protect me. Don't, you know, if I ask you to give me a friendly, that's different. So, but I mean, I'm just saying, because I'm working on something, I got to switch my base around. I need to see that. How am I going to grow as a player? If I don't see my weaknesses in my base, we don't have a replay like War Commander Robosol. We don't have a replay like they have in Battle Pirates, if and when it's working, okay? Because it's not always working. So I want to, but then again, when I go into somebody's base, I want to be able to watch that and I want to see. I want you to hit it. Just this mm -hmm. whole thing about, well, I didn't want to hit you. Fuck that, hit me. Jesus. Like I, lost three, I, I lost 3K infamy or 2K infamy just just popping because I wanted people to hit my base and I was actually having fun with them strategizing and stuff and I was watching how they were hitting me and I've rearranged my base and I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to have people hit it and because friends you can get friendly tests all you want but uh, there's no there's no uh, there's no substitute is the word I'm looking for for somebody that hates hates you or dislikes you in the game and they would just, they just want to bring everything and flat you they're going to be a lot more uh, vengeful and whatnot than than your friend your friend and that's you know, a friend. good test that you don't is have great that's a good test like you don't like have Lonnie. Type of people i know how Lonnie plan. hits you i know how Lonnie type. hits i know how people hit my all my friends a lot of my friends that i see hitting i in hangouts i know how they hit so I, you know i'm good at the i think i would be good at defending um well, to this day me and him have never officially went at it but um 
But, so, you know, an enemy, you don't know how they're going to attack. You don't know if they're like, uh, what's that guy's name? Dragon? That yeah, dra I was just going to say Dragon. He's another dragon one. Dragon takes six years in a base, but he will yeah. flat it. Um, yeah. Pulls all kinds of stuff that you would never aggressive. think of. Jordan was <laughs> another one when Jordan was playing. Tech Ninja. Des. Or Dark Ninja when he changed it. Jordan was another one. He just pulled stuff out of the clear blue sky. <laughs> And it was it was great to be in a Google Hangout and watch him go, him and and Shadow Killer go and hit people, and all of a sudden I'm like, what the fuck kind of unit is that? It's something I never built and something that he had, you know, from back in the day. And I'm he goes, watch this, Skip, and I knew that the player on the other end had to be shitting his pants because I'm thinking I would never think to pull that unit out and use that for that. And he's like, I don't care. I'll just put it in overnight to repair. But, you know, the next thing you know, he's got that thing that's into repair. He doesn't hardly lose any of his air. Maybe he's got an hour damage to one other thing. He doesn't care. All he wanted to do was scare the crap out of the guy and flatten him. And it works. Yeah, I'll, I'll tell you what, I showed data when, when data first came back, I showed him, like, a max base. It was it was spread out really, really wide. And I said, Data, how would you hit this? And he says, oh, all right, jabs for this, Oni's for that. He was telling me how he would do it with his units. And this was like a 45, 46 with like pretty much full base, full base tune or line. He was like, the bunkers yeah, aren't going to hit the jabs because the jabs got 620 range. I couldn't do it online, but I could do it offline. You know? Yeah. Oh, yeah, of course. Right. Offline. Oh, yeah. Right. But then, but still, just the fact that you, here you've been out of the game for so long and you don't even have all the stuff that we have. And that is the reason why I've got uh, jabs currently built. Well, had them. I've got them built now. Because I'm mm -hmm. like, all right, well, I totally forgot about him. Date is the reason why I didn't scrap my jabs, actually, because you know, I'm 625 about... range. Yeah, I mean, nothing, nothing other than the Hellfires <coughs> at this point in time. I have that know, kind the of the legendary range. Hellfires have that kind of range, and there's and range. now they and now they don't. Yep, I so. had somebody send me a picture and said, "I've never seen this unit before." They took it. They had a player send me a picture. And mm -hmm. said, um, they t how does this player have this unit? They're taking units out of the event bases because he hit me with it. And I said, okay. He said, I logged in while I was being attacked. I got a notification on my phone and I logged in. And he had a screenshot. Well, I had to blow the screenshot up because it was really tiny. It was, I don't know, maybe this, maybe the size of half of a baseball card size. Okay. So I had to blow it up to look at it. I kept looking. I'm looking and I'm going, oh, I was like, that's a fucking javelin. And I PM'd him back and I said, do you know what a javelin is? And he said, no, I have no idea. And I said, how long have you played? So I had to look at his ID and I'm like, that's a javelin. He goes, yes, they took the unit. They took one, a kick size unit. They're hacking up a unit. No, that unit is a unit that you should probably have in your game. He only had a 32 mil ID. I don't know what a javelin is. I said, well, you need to go to the wiki. And I gave him the link and I showed him that it was a legitimate unit. He actually thought that this guy was hacking a unit and that it was a kick side unit, you know, like in one of the event bases. Yeah, in the event and so oh, very possible. Lord have mercy. He didn't even Wait, know when you had units. Was. Could you imagine the shock on that player's base if he would have opened up his attack log and seen that data flattened him with javelins and scorchers? With javelins? Oh, no. <laughs> <laughs> Everything it had incredible range. You're going to be like... Things that shouldn't have reached, and and I had my stuff, and I marked it off, and I was like, "No, it's a javelin, dude." Here's the wiki. I it took me too long to explain it to him. Just go to the wiki, and I just cut and pasted the wiki, and he says, "I've never had this unit. I I didn't even know it existed." I said, "I bet you have it, but you probably scrapped it. Why don't you go back and look and see, and make sure, and then build yourself some. You wow. have to start them all over again." Well, that's what happens when you scrap stuff without thinking. Real quick, can we screen share data? I just want to make a comment here. Uh, you talking to me? No, data. You keep doing what you're doing. Mm -hmm. All right. I just want to make. I just want to make a uh, thing. He's upgrading his walls right now, one mm -hmm. by one by one. Can we yeah, make because this... I don't have enough resources no, no, no. to do all would, the walls at the same time. I want to say, is there a way to make make us so we can upgrade like ten or fifteen at a time? You know, with res slash floor and not coin. No. No. no, no, not now. But no. I'm saying, you know, if you're no. I, I was trying to ask for a five or a ten block, but then. We've had these walls for so long. I had I back in the day when the new walls were proposed, and I'm not going to say when that was. And yes, I know we're live, but back in the day when the new walls were pro were proposed, and then I think things are had to be. Yeah, yeah, we're still alive. Yeah, oh my God, end this fucking yeah. 
monstrosity <laughs> of a fucking Yeah, show. I know. Jesus. Oh I was going to ask you, Phil, do you have a way you can edit this down? So just like when Ron Taker got on? I can. I can edit this down and I will edit this down. Two-parter, you know what I mean? Yeah. No, Maybe don't edit. Ask, there's still a bunch of players that don't are, don't have their CCs up enough, close enough to to, to do CC12. So maybe I can ask to see because that was something they were considering about doing a five or a ten block at a time. If you could hold the resources, maybe oh, yeah. they worked on that, and that could be something they could bring back because we've had these level. What are they? Eleven walls, ten walls, whatever they are. The old walls that that data has now. Yeah. Well, level, 11. Level, level, level 10 going to level yeah, 11. We had yep. these for a long, long time, but they were considering doing that when we got the um, the mini base preparation. They were actually considering doing that, that so that we could upgrade 5 or 10 at a time. Not for gold, if you could hold that much resources. And then mm -hmm. that kind of got shelved for a while. Maybe they'd be willing to bring it back. Uh, I'll, I just wrote it down. There's a, there's a financial barrier that's in there that I can say financial barrier, and that's all I can say about that's it. That's all we should they say. Reduce, they want I, to I want to upgrade, I like to upgrade all my walls. Show, uh, my level has team been works. going for five hours. Yeah. It will take ten minutes here and there. So I, yeah. it's five o'clock in the morning. We're going to wrap up. We're going to do some shout outs and some last words and kill this show before I drop on my keyboard. And that's the last thing anybody wants because then the show will never end. <laughs> so, Anton, have you got any shout outs, some last words for me, buddy? Well, yeah. I'll three hours. Shut up, Dollar. This is the show that never Shut ends. Up! <laughs> Again, thanks for the invite again there. Thanks for the YouTube community. Thanks to all the panel here and Sector 49 and all my friends and so-called enemies, where well, they're not really enemies, and that there. And thanks for all the questions. Thanks to Wrong Thinker for coming on there. And the Queen, of course, there, Skipjack. And I'll also say, Shadow, where are you? We need you back. No oh, shit, he could take over this. <laughs> uh, not, 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 not for you there, but just back in general. No worries, no worries. Dover, you're up. Sounded bad. All right, so uh, there will be a timestamp on this video, assuming that it stays up this length. I will timestamp the just like I did the other one where Wrong Thinker starts and ends, just for everyone that's watching. Um, yeah, shout out to Wrong Thinker definitely, and more importantly, Skip for getting him on. Uh, and he was definitely a great help. I will learn a lot, and looking for he's give us a lot of lot of hope for the game to continue forward, making War Commander great again. Uh, shout out to Forty Nine. Shout out to also another great shout out to all those in YouTube that uh, were not trolling and actually did provide good questions. I was able to get ninety nine percent of them asked uh, either by myself or another one of the panelists, and so did good job YouTube for the most part. You actually kept it pretty good. A final shout out. Thank you to Dr. Phil, who is currently up at five in the morning, uh, running this show. Because, uh, yeah, you're an awesome person. And yeah, I second the. I second that. Uh, uh, Shadow definitely needs to come back. <laughs> Phil, you got any shout outs, buddy? Yes. Uh, big shout out to Skip for getting wrong thinker on the show and. <laughs> Big shout out to Wrong Thinker for taking a lot of time out of his day to to, uh, to hang out with us and uh, give us a lot of good info, a lot of things that we've been wanting to know. Um, I'd like to get you know, what else do I want to say? Oh yeah, shout out to Pokemon Go for being a fucking awesome game. I hate you. <laughs> I fucking hate you. <laughs> 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 and and shout out to Dr. Phil for putting up with us. Especially me. <laughs> fear. Good for you, Fear. Motherfucker. <laughs> shout, like shout, shout out, buddy. Uh, shout out to Skipjack for coming onto the panel. Shout out to Wrong Thinker for making an appearance and giving us an insane amount of information that we wouldn't have gotten anywhere else. Shout out to everybody buddy in the YouTube who's lucky enough to catch him live and ask him your questions live and shout out to Dr. Phil for holding this show 
staying up well past his grumpy ass bedtime and for being the best Pokemon trainer I know. <laughs> and you can suck a dick too. <laughs> Skipjack, shout out, Milo. Yes, my darling. I'd like to uh, send a special mind meld shout out to Dr. Phil because I've um, been dealing with some personal issues and Dr. Phil knows what's going on in a few select few, but no one else does. So I'm not going to go into that, but I just had this overwhelming feeling that I needed to not sit down and just take a deep breath. I needed to swing my tray around and fire up the lap, not the laptop, the desktop. And the first message I went to, and then the second message I went to, and I was like, Oh shit, you guys are still live. And then I realized that people were having a, a cow about the update. So it was the mind meld before I even turned the computer on from you, Dr. Phil. So thank you for that mind meld. I told you we have that connection. Wait, I want to thank the community for all of your messages um, and for your patience when I'm not around, which I wish I could be. Um, and also would like a huge shout out to, doc, to um, Wrong Thinker. And he did say it was always fun times it was his parting note to all of us and i am reading right out of the room and i don't give a shit because it's my pm to him and his pm to me always fun times thank you so much for everyone on Ch unshackled and the community for having me on on such short notice oh. so i definitely wanted to say a shout out to him because on the fly the maintenance was running a little late which of course everybody knew that and then they had to put it off and then they had to put it off again and it was a big maintenance so uh, for all of your patience but the fact that the man sat around and he waited to make sure everything ran smoothly and then he said I'm, i can get there i'm coming and then he couldn't so i didn't say anything to you and then it's like yes i can i can make it make a spot so again to the panel i can't remember who popped off so he could Debo. get on Debo there prepare okay, play. Debo, Debo, super sexy shout out i'll sing to you the next show um shout out to all the people on youtube who continued to hang around and dealt with the rapid fire questions that were so out of order thank you for whoever else jumped out so that data king could get in so he could ask his question and um for the person that i ended up banning in youtube chat not uh, you know uh suck a bag of dicks eat a bag of dicks i don't care if you don't like it i don't care i don't i won't put up with that shit when we've got kicks eye coming on the show not gonna have it so there you go so i already got a pm from him wanting to know why i banned him from the youtube put him in a timeout and then i banned him because he was a dick so there you go there's your answer i was the rules if you're a dick you get booted simple as yeah, and if you ask Dr. Phil, he'll boot you simply. I'll put you in a timeout, but I mean, if I put you in a timeout, that's kind of like your indication, stop being a dick. So anyway, I just ha I guess I have just a little bit more patience. I'm, I'm running out of patience. I'm learning not to have as much patience, but thank you for the community. Thank you, King, for, for making the effort that you did and then firing me up so that I could have my little rant because I just needed to get that off my chest. And there are 44 triple Ds, so that's a lot of stuff that can sit on that chest. So There you go. Ken, you got any shout-outs, my man? Uh, first off, I want to shout-out to Anton because he's the one that originally gave me his spot. I didn't ask him to. He doesn't ever need to do that again, or I might just hit his base. Um, <laughs> secondly, you probably will. I, I probably. Um, I want to thank everyone on the panel. I want to thank Wrong Thinker for spending his time once again on the show and answering a whole lot of questions and leaving us all looking into the near future for the updates. Um, and also, Daba mentioned something inside the side chat. If anyone um, wants to learn about the hotkeys and how to use them correctly. Um, you can just reach Daba on the Unshackled page or however, and he could probably explain it a whole lot better than I could. So, What's this probabil probably nonsense? <laughs> now, okay. now. I could, definitely, I could definitely explain it if you guys need any help with it. The knowledge comes with a price of 50 gold. Yeah, but Daba, 50, could, 50 could, Daba gold. Could you draw it out for us, <laughs> though, Daba? Could you, rather than say it? <laughs> 
I'm thinking about making a video of it, uh, just so this way I can just pass it around. But I will definitely help, like individually, show people too. I'm gonna, make a, post, I'm gonna make a post. I'm gonna make a post on the Uncheckle page in about a week or so because I'm gonna let this show. It's priceless. I, 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 I need to be one of them as well. I need to be one of them. Put on like a a Texan aus, uh, auctioneer accent as well. <laughs> the best what I got is this Cletus accent. That's pretty horrible, but it's whatever. Excellent. Oh, God. Okay. Can, can, can carry, carry, carry on. I really want to go to sleep. <laughs> Lady Warrior, can I have your shout outs, please, darling? Oh, shout out to oh, stop everybody. Being a prick. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> shout out to everybody on the panel. Uh, shout out to Wrong Thinker. Thank you so much for coming on the show again and giving us a lot of really good information. We always appreciate you coming on and we'd love to have you and can't wait to have you again. Uh, shout out to XR. Love you guys. I'll see you soon. Shout out to 115. Keep doing what you're doing. And on a final note, this is my last show for probably about eight weeks. I bought a house and I'm moving. So I won't be in War Commander or on the show for probably six to eight weeks. So you might get a welcome I'm back. glad I got to see be on this one with Wrong Finger. This was great. And then also, of course, with the Queen and everybody else on the panel and in YouTube land. Um, really appreciate it, and I'm going to miss you guys, but I'll be yeah. back. Good for you, Lily. Good for you. Yep. It works out well. Data King, shout out, please, buddy. Shout out to 49. Shout out to Raid. Shout out to Champ for helping me with some Thor tonight. Shout out to Anton. Shout out to Pascal, Lonnie. Uh, and to the millions and millions <laughs> of YouTube viewers out there, go to bed. <laughs> <laughs> No, it's like it's 12:30. I have to be up for work at six. He's talking to you. Kids. You go to school in the morning. Go to sleep. It's past your bedtime. <laughs> Panel four. Time to go oh, home. Yeah, not necessarily. Oh, sleep. Oh, Can I have your shout outs, please, my man? <laughs> I'll do shout out to the panel. Shout out to everyone that's came out, and obviously to Long Thinker for taking time to come and chill with us to answer questions that we weren't sure about. So yeah. Excellent, excellent, and of course. <laughs> that needs to be what double foot in the side. That needs to be mentioned. That needs to be mentioned. I'll I'll shut up and let me get done what I need to get done. Oh yeah, and shout out to friend. Where's ah! your friend with Doc? <laughs> <laughs> I'm getting tired go. and now I'm getting irritable. Oh, let me finish up so I can go the fuck to sleep before somebody gets their head bitten off. <laughs> Of course, thank you to Wrong Thinker for coming on the show again, again for the for the second time in a second month. <coughs> Suck on that one, hiker. Get your cock checked out, bro. Are we still late? Yes, yes, we're, we're still, still live. live. <laughs> and I don't care. It's this is quote unquote my show, and I will say whatever the fuck I like. Damn fucking straight. <laughs> and of course, he came out to answer all the concerns that we had with all of the all of the updates and all of the new shit that comes on and again massive respect to the guy always 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 massive respect and of course to the panel that has been on this evening and the guys that have dropped in to let other people come in and ask some questions again massive props to all of you the guys in the YouTube that still aren't banned, except for fucking KS Man of War, who keeps getting timed out and won't obey the fucking rules. So you'll keep getting timed out until you learn to obey the rules. And of course, that's pretty much everything up for tonight. So do remember, if you're going to do anything in War Commander, don't overstretch yourself. Don't be stupid. Don't get unnecessary repairs. And as always, have fun. Enjoy the game. Thank you very much for watching, and we'll speak to you soon.